We are back at UNH Stadium. The uh, captains are out at midfield now, ready to take the coin toss to see who's going to kick, receive, take, whatever. It's all it's all a game today and who's going to get it. We want to talk about the uh, fan, fan base here. Um, and uh, the, the Bedford fans are right below us. Bedford's out there in their black uniforms with red trim. Uh... Uh, Exeter is across from us, white with blue trim. And the uh, captains are out there for Bedford. Uh, Nick Leahy, Sharuk Hussein, uh, Nick Canoni, and Jacob Gregson is out there. So Bedford won the toss and declined. So they're going to want to get the ball in the second half. And here we go. Exeter is going to receive, and they're going to be going from our right to left. And we're ready, ready to kick this thing off. The Bedford Band, Bedford Bulldog Band just finished up a great national anthem. Mm. The crowds are here, standing, 46 degrees. Beautiful weather. Weather's not going to be a factor, at least at the beginning of the game here, Steve, and hopefully not throughout the game. And we're going to have see a great Division I Boys Football Championship here at UNH. Great weather. Uh, perfect conditions, really, to play football. Weather's, uh, the uh, breeze is very reasonable. Uh, one's got to got to say that uh, with a 9-0 team coming in, that favors Bedford on the spread offense. But I was just watching the uh, blocking schemes uh, and and the and the uh, sheer determination and talent of uh, Exeter. Yep. You've, got, you've got a great spread team going against a very very solid running team. Quarterback for Exeter is going to be Kyle Ball, Cam Flanagan, Brad Camet, and Brent, Brandon Lowry. Going to be the guys you're going to see a big dose of. While we have a second, why don't we go do a legal ID and get that out of the way. Okay, legal ID. We are brought to you at here at WBNH LP Bedford 1051. Bedford 1051 here at the campus of UNH in Durham, New Hampshire. Back deep for Exeter. You're going to see, uh, like I said, you're going to see uh, uh, Flanagan back there. You're going to see Ball back there. This kid, Kyle Ball, the quarterback, plays defense. He's the real deal. He's a fabulous football player, but just this week he signed a, a, a contract, a full boat, up for University of Maine to play baseball. So talk about the athlete for this kid, Kyle Ball. Well, this kid is something to, to watch. Uh, Connor and uh, Kyle uh, fake as good as anybody in all of New Hampshire football uh, this year, uh, and that's important, and both of them run very well. Joe uh, Aiello ready to kick it off from our left to right. Kick is away, and it is just a res it looks like an off onside kick taken about the 33-yard line where actually is going to take over. They did not want to kick it deep to those guys. They lot, were a threat. A lot of respect right there, Mike. Uh, some of that comes not only from the runners themselves, also the great blocking. Uh, squad. They don't want to, uh, coach doesn't want to come into, uh, Stank doesn't want to come into a situation where he's uh, giving up six uh, right off the bat. So. All right, so you're going to see Exeter, you're going to see a lot of straight or tight tees, single wing, double wing, and they come out right off the bat with a uh, single wing to the right. Ball on the center, 33 yard line. Man in motion coming this way. Handoff straight up the middle to Flanagan. Gets hit once, twice at the line of scrimmage for no game. Bedford defense answers Exeter's first play. Obviously, the first two plays between deferring and taking it in the second half and then just kicking it down and giving them 35 yard field position shows that uh, Coach Stank from Bedford is very confident in his defense. If you look at the surge there for the first play, Looks like he might be right. You're going to see um, Kyle Jalbert in there, number 39. He got, you know, walked off the field hurt last week for Bedford. He's back. All right, here we go. Straight T. Uh, Kyle Ball under center from the 33-yard line. Waiting the snap. First snap. Second man through. Fakes it. Rolls right. Rolls right. Being chased. Fires. Incomplete. Had the man open, number 37. Uh, Braden uh, Lowry, uh, one of the T-backs, uh, had him open there. Looks like uh, the speed of the outside pursuit of Bedford was there. Number 13, I believe that is uh, Kyle. Uh, 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 Lagerquist. Lager Kyle Lagerquist Bedford, uh, yeah. is, uh, did a great job there spotting him. Yep. So here we go. It's going to be third down and nine. 11-18 to go. Uh, Exeter breaks. Got a single wing near side. Ball under center. 
Kamet in the backfield. Goes back to drop. Pressure. A lot of pressure. Rolling. This is where he's dangerous. Comes up field. Tries to cut. And he's brought down by 53. Spencer Adams on a great open field tackle. They're going to have to kick. Yeah, that's a great job there by Spencer. Uh, Kyle's not an easy guy to catch or bring down. Uh, and what, what that again, that's what they practice all year long during the week. Keep your defenders square to the line of scrimmage. And that's exactly what, uh, what, he, what uh, 53... Spencer, yeah, Spencer, Spencer, uh, Spencer yeah. Adams did a great job there. Back to kick. Cody Moore set for Exeter. Back on the 23-yard line. Back deep. Sharuk Hussein for Bedford. Snap back. Good snap. Balls away. Pressure up. Nice booming kick. Backing him up. Fair catch. And he gets it about the 16, 15-yard line where Bedford offense is going to take over. Great kick, great coverage. Wow, what a kick. I mean, that thing had uh, distance uh, and, and, uh, and height, uh, hang time. Uh, what a great job there. Excellent uh, uh, ability of the offensive line to provide the uh, kicker with plenty of time to line up the ball. That's a good positional change there. So uh, even though they didn't get a first down, uh, Bedford's locked in deep on their own 15-yard line. Welcome to the spread offense. We got uh, two to the right, one to the left, tight end. Leahy in the backfield with Robert, waiting for the direct snap. Direct snap back, fires left-hand side, uh, caught. And that's, uh, I believe that's number 82. That is Sharuk, who, uh, no. excuse me, that's uh, 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 Noah Shabrick. Sorry about that. Noah, the kid who was the hero of the uh, last week's game. Noah does it all. He blocks as well as he catches the ball, runs great passing routes, and seems to have excellent timing with the quarterback, Connor Robert. The one thing Exeter does, they play, they give the kids a lot of um, uh, yardage off the ball, and if they do that, Connor's going to pick them off all day long. Back out. Uh, Lee in the backfield with Robert. Two, three to the right. Hand off Leahy up the middle, and Exeter responds, no no gain. Yeah, but great job by the defensive line. Uh, looks like Bedford standing on the offensive line, standing up a little bit there, and uh, Exeter was able to get separation and, uh, and get to the ball gonna behind bring the line up, of scrimmage. Going to bring up third and one with 9.44, and the clock going in the first quarter here at UNH Stadium in the Durham, New Hampshire. Bedford breaks. They're going to send two receivers to the left, two to the right. Lay in the backfield with Robert. The spread offense. Robert waiting for the snap. Gets it. Looks. Fakes. Hands off. Open hole. Leahy up the middle to the 30. Up to the 31. First down. Nice delay. I like the play call. Uh, everybody's uh, uh, coming outside. Uh, open up a uh, open up a nice gap there in the middle. And uh, why not give it to Leahy if you any time if you can do it. I like the call, uh, Mike. Ba defensive backs ha have to come back. Get into coverage. Like it. 15, Harrison Lagulon comes in. Had a great uh, open field uh, catch last week for positive yards. They're going to put uh, two receivers to the left, two to the right. Leahy in the backfield with Robert. Waiting for the direct snap. Snap, fake, looks. Looks to his left, fires. Hits Liam Green in the flats, and he's covered immediately. So he's going to get maybe, maybe one. Maybe. Maybe. Looks like. Depends yeah. where the spot is. Looks like about uh, maybe one or two. Actually, no, I think it's right at the line of scrimmage. No, you're right. One or two. You got it. Uh, uh, on first down now, uh, the first adjustment of the game, uh, Billy Ball goes to a three-man defensive line uh, to get more guys in the back right, backfield. Second and eight. Two to the right, two to the left. Lee in the backfield. Robert goes, fire, runs left-hand side, and he's hitting Brock down for maybe a yard gain. That's going to bring yeah. up third and maybe seven, eight, Ath 21. Ath lateral athleticism and uh, and just sheer core strength of this uh, and quickness and separation. Uh, just excellent tacticians, uh, these defensive of linemen on both sides of the ball here. So yeah, those three, those three down linemen. You're also going to see 71 roaming out there. Pat Gillis for Exeter. He's he's on either side of the ball. You'll see a lot of Gillis out there today. Yep. Bedford breaks. They're going to bring two receivers to the right, two to the left. Leahy in the backfield with Robert. Uh, 7:53 in the first. Direct snap. Looks left. Fires. Incomplete. Doesn't look like there's any flags. No uh, flags. Yeah, don't, it looked like Connor felt a little hurried there. Uh, didn't see anybody close by, but there may have been. Uh, but he just looked a little hurried, kind of rushed that pass. Pretty good coverage there uh, by the uh, corner, but right cornerback from uh, uh, Exeter, though. So 49 left in the first, no score. Bedford is going to uh, kick. That's Connor Crowley back at about the 22-yard line. And deep for Exeter, I believe, is Ball and Flanagan. Ball is up, kick, nice high kick. Uh, Exeter is going to get away from it. Takes a Bedford bounce. Rolls down to the 22-21 uh, yard line where Exeter is going to take over. Great kick. Yeah, first, uh, actually first tactical error by uh, Exeter on specials there. Uh, got an opportunity to... Um 
uh, got an opportunity to um, you know come up there, come up a little bit, call a fair catch. Could have been at the 42 yard line on that uh, Mike, and uh, winds it up, uh, rolls all the way to the 24 of uh, of Exeter. So balls on the 24. Exeter is going to be going from our right to left with their second possession with 7:36 to go in the first quarter. Exeter breaks. Kyle Ball under center. We got a wing T to the to the right. Kamet. Now they shift. Wing T to the left. Ball hands off. Second man through to Exeter and immediately swarmed by Bedford with no gain. Maybe a half a yard loss. Clearly the defensive lines on both sides of the ball are winning the trenches right now, Mike, because they just can't move them. Uh, and uh, j just excellent tactical work. You can see a lot of this is hand work, uh, body position. I mean, it's it's a real sumo hand match in there uh, right now on both sides of the ball for defense. So Exeter breaks. It's going to be second down, nine yards to go, 7-10 to go. Uh, straight tee in, a straight tee in the backfield. Ball under center. Ball takes a step. Second man through fakes. Rolls to the right. He's going to keep it and go. This is where he's dangerous. Got to the 30, out to the 32-yard line. That's good enough for a first down. Actually, out to the 35, 6-yard line. First down. The pullers, the, the, the pulling guard and the uh, pulling uh, center. I, I believe that was the center. I, I want to watch it again. Uh, Might have been backside guard. Both guards do, just do a great job of turning around the corner and building a wall for Kyle to make a get outside, make a judgment, any pass downfield or tuck it and run. It's been very effective. Them, if you watch the Nashville game. Very effective. They tore Nashua apart. Okay. Uh, we got a uh, wing tee to the right. Ball ball under center. Uh, ball is snap. Going to be first man through. That's, that's going to be uh, Kamet. And he's brought right down. But a nice five yard gain. You got to watch this kid first guy through. You miss him. He's going to get some positive yards like that happens. Yeah. Too. A lot of good clearing. Uh, a lot of good angle blocking taking place. Good angle drive blocking. Uh, um, Talk to you uh, used to be able to talk once in a while with uh, Nick Vale, He's a big guy on dry on uh, on on drive blocking, and uh, Billy Ball teaches his kids as good as anywhere. Second down and three. Balls on the 42 yard line. Exeter driving. Uh, straight T now. Ball under center. Takes the snap. Second guy through. That's Flanagan. Positive yards. Gets a first down. They're going to move the sticks. Gets out to about the 46 yard line. Two th this is, I mean, the Billy Ball is very happy right now what he's seen the last three or four plays. Uh, he's uh, making adjustments, winning a little bit of the line of scrimmage, opening up some gaps. But most importantly, they don't care about a long eight minute drive because they want to keep Connor Roberts and that spread offense off the field. So this is a double killer for uh, if they can keep this going. All right, straight T. Uh, Kyle Ball under center. First, first down. Ready for the snap, snap in, second guy through, fakes, he rolls again to the right, positive yards, up to the 50, turns the corner, gets out to the Bedford 45-yard line, I believe. Nothing fancy there, Mike, just clear-cut execution. Uh, the decision-making of ball, uh, other than that little errant pass, has been A1 every single time. Very, very difficult, this straight T, or you got the single, you got the double wing. There's a lot of misdirection. You got to hit everybody coming through the hole. And Coach Ball wants to, he will watch from up in the booth with his staff of that defensive uh, group to come up. Straight T under center. Ball waiting for the snap. Takes a snap. Second guy through. That's Flanagan on the right hand side, and that's going to be a first down, moving the sticks. Yeah, so what you're going to see is you're going to start more guys stacking the box, Mike, more guys coming up. He's waiting for do a play action pass. And then that's when they're going to start looking at their either reader number 10 or Graham number 88 their their uh, their ends over there right. for Exeter so ball is now on the Bedford 43 yard line Exeter breaks once again comes out to the straight tee ball under center Bedford doesn't have an answer yet ball waiting for the snap takes a snap first guy through Kamet and gets three yards again solid three yards no, pi no piles of dust on a turf field, so uh, they get up a little easier. But that was a really nice play by, uh, by number 39, uh, who was able to scissors, uh, scissor his legs. Otherwise, he might have gone for 12 or 13. Ball's on the 40-yard line, 5.19 to go in the first quarter. Exeter going from our right to left with a nice sustained drive, their second drive of, of the game. Exeter breaks, comes out with a straight tee, ball under center. Ball ready for the snap. Snap comes. Fakes it, tries to turn up here. That could have been a broken play. Got a couple yards. Going to bring up third down on about four. Could have also been a decision that uh, that uh, Kyle Ball was able to call on his own uh, when he sees a gap there. So 4.19 to go. It's third and five. Balls on the Bedford 38-yard line. 4.45 to go in the first quarter. Exeter with their second drive and a sustained drive. This is where Bedford has to uh, pucker up a little. 
and shut this offense down. This may be four down territory. We'll see how much they get here. Single wing to the right. Ball under center. Pitch. Flan uh, that's Lowry coming to the right hand side. Turns the corner. Gets to the 30 yard line. That's a first down. Quick pitch to Lowry. Touchdown saving tackle by Sean Rook who's saying there was nobody after Sean Rook. He would have gone pay dirt right in the end zone there, Mike, if he didn't take him down. So 4.23 to go in the first quarter. Ball is now on the Bedford 29-yard line, first and 10 Exeter. They bring out multiple bags of tricks with this offense. you got to hit everybody coming through, and you got to stay home and make your plays. Look for a counter or something here, Mike. Ball. He's been setting it up. Straight T. Ball under center. 30-yard line. Snap. Second guy through. That's Lowry, and he's bottled up Lowry right at the line of scrimmage. So that's 4.03 to go. Maybe, maybe a yard to the 27, 27-yard line. Yeah, that play was slow to develop. Looked like too much lateral movement before instead of just attacking the hole. Uh, their uh, Bedford defense working hard here. I mean, they just keep on backing up, and that gets uh, psychologically uh, difficult over time. Second down, eight to go. Ball's on the 27-yard line, 3.38 to go first quarter. Ball under center, single wing to the right. Ball takes the snap, goes back, second man through, Flanagan cuts over the 25 to the 22-yard line. Great job there following his block as Mike had, a, had uh, two hands on the ball and just uh, ducking and tuck it, tucking behind his uh, pulled uh, guard. And uh, they just do a great job at it. Very, great execution. That's going to come down to the Bedford 22-yard line. Third and three to go. 3 9 and counting in the first quarter. Exeter with a sustained drive. Now they come out to the straight tee. Ball under center. Ball. Snap. Second guy through, immediately tackled. Flanagan took a hit, See and that's going to that bring is. up fourth down. That's a great tackle. Uh, I'm falling. I'm trying to figure out. Number 42 from Bedford. Fourth down. Uh, Owen Brown. Owen Brown. Nice what a great job. job. Good nice vision job. there. Yeah. Got separation from the from the uh, blocking um, uh, guard and uh, just did a great job there. So this is four down territory. It's fourth and three to go. 232, ball on the 22-yard line. Exit a route with the straight T. Ball under center. Ball. Snap. Second guy through, and the ball takes it, tries to turn the corner. He slips and falls, and I don't think he got it. I don't it. think he got it. If he didn't slip, he had it. But I, I think I think they're going to hit him uh, further back. I think it's going to be short about a yard. And let's see what happens. And it is Bedford yeah. holds. That's a big hold right there. <laughs> that wasn't so much Bedford holding him as much as it was <laughs> yeah, him slipping. Good point. But Bedford will take it just the same. <laughs> Give him credit. No, we'll take it. Listen, you know Absolutely. what? Absolutely. Listen, the ball wanted to take it um, off to the right, and as he turned the corner, he slipped. Listen, that's the issue about going on fourth down. Do you take the points? Do you want to move the sticks? And that, that came back, and that hurt Exeter this time. Yeah, night. I think it might have been a little bit outside there. Kicker's uh, probably uh, his... Uh, Bedford, two to the right, two to the left. In the backfield, Robert looks, fires to the left-hand side. Shrew Hussein turns the corner, 20, 25, to the 30, spins, 33, spins again, gets out to the 33-yard line, first down. Nice, um, nice job. Watching the field, very fortunate for Bedford that uh, didn't get a, a hole called there. Uh, looked like uh, he was being tugged as he was pulling away uh, from the blocking uh, right uh, wide receiver. But you know what? You'll take that, too. So this series of down, we have Sean Tierney in the background. Tierney and Leahy uh, alternate uh, downs here. So we got two to the right, two to the left. Tierney in the background with Robert. Direct snap, Robert, and there's a flag. There's a whistle. There is a flag down. Let's see. What do we got, Steve? Um, could be illegal. Uh, I mean, it could be a uh, illegal motion. No. Uh, it looks like they're going to bring yeah. it back. Yeah. They're going to. They're going to. We'll see what the call they're is. Gonna back up Bedford. Well, I, what was the call? I, I really wish the white man, the man with the white hat, would uh, come out a little bit. I, I couldn't see what he called, Mike. Did you? Five, it's a five-yard penalty. So, anyways, yeah. so that's going to cost them. It's going to be either first. illegal formation or maybe uh, balls on the uh, Bedford 27-yard line with 153 to go in the first quarter. Bedford comes out two to two to the right, two to the left. Rob in the background rolls and another whistle. So uh, that's probably a false flag. start. I wish he'd come out a little. There he is, right there. Okay. Uh, was, the calls. was everybody set? We're not even sure. I they, think that might have been a false start. Let's see what the official says. He's coming out. There he is. Yeah. They're backing up Bedford again. Offside. Offside, Bedford. Bedford. Yeah. So that might have been the same call two times in a row, Mike. I didn't see what the first one was, but. So after stopping Exeter in their second possession, Bedford gets a first down and then has two five-yard penalties. Now it's first and 20. 
Ball is on the 22-yard line. And again, Bedford breaks. Uh, Tierney in the backfield with Robert, two to the right, two to the left. Robert takes a snap, drops straight back, then comes upfield, runs, and he's going to be swallowed up by some Bedford players here and gets out to about the 24-yard line. I yeah, Connor's got to be careful there wrestling with a bunch of guys tackling him because you can't afford to get injured. Uh, there was really nothing to get there. Just uh, tuck the ball and go down. Yeah, it's second and 16. Ball's going to be on the 26. That's a good point, Steve. You don't want to lose Connor early no. in the game. Or, or have a, you know, you're deep in your own end or have a, a fumble. So, Bedford comes out, spread offense. We've got Teeny in the backfield with Robert. This time we've got a uh, little confusion over there. We're going to go three to the left, one to the right. Ready for the snap. Robert's right back, and I think they took too much time. Wow. Yeah, I think you're right. They're going to look back at this series when they do the, the game films and uh, say you get, can't keep shooting yourself in the foot with five-yard penalties. Yeah. Timeout. Time out. So Bedford had some confusion, and Coach Yeah, Stank, something's going on there. Coach, Coach Stank called a timeout. So. Smart move for Coach Stank to call a timeout. Get his team ready. Uh, do, you know, don't try to get all this back at once. You know, try to get four or five yards on a play. Get something underneath because um, they, can, they, can, they can move the ball down the field quickly. They got two opportunities here to, Fifth, to run 17 yards. 55 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Bedford 105-1 radio bringing you this game. I'm Mike Robinson with Steve Beals at the campus of UNH in Durham, New Hampshire. No score in the first quarter. Um, tightly controlled. Both offenses stumbled in the beginning and started moving, and then here we are. No score. Bedford with the ball. They're going three to the left, one to the right. Tierney in the backfield with Robert. Trips left, Mike. Trips left, excuse me. Go back. Robert, straight backs. Look left. Fires off into the flats to Tierney, and uh, Robert just underthrew him. So. Yeah. I don't know if he saw the defender there, was afraid he was going to uh, come up and steal the ball uh, or what, but you know what? Uh, better safe than sorry there. If they don't get it here, you kick it away and you put that solid defense back out on the field. But one thing for sure is, is that if you're looking at it from a staff on the each sideline as far as game plan, this is playing more into uh, Exeter's hands than it is Bedford, the so style of this game. 52 seconds to go, third and 16, balls on the 26. Bedford trips left, one to the right, Tierney in the backfield with Robert. Robert, direct snap, goes back, looks, looks left, looks left, plenty of time, down the field, wide open, and oh, that was almost, now, first of all, just over the hands of Noah Shabrick, Shabrick and, and almost intercepted by Exeter, so yeah. a good incomplete. Yeah, I mean, he's taking an inside route, so you know you're going to get whacked, but Noah's really got to go up on that with two hands. Uh, that ball was a catchable ball. Uh, would have been a good catch, but you got to put both hands up in the air. The only problem is you got a couple defenders there just waiting at your midsection uh, to, to make the hit. So, uh, so brings up fourth down, and we've got Flanagan and ball deep for Exeter. Connor Crowley ready to kick. 46 seconds to go in the first quarter. Crowley standing back, gets the fields it. Nice high kick, and it's going to be fielded. That's oh, I never saw the fair I, catch. I never saw you? the fair catch either. Wow, that was Kyle Ball caught it about the uh, Exeter 46 yard line. That's we're going to take over possession. Yeah, there's a. Uh, um, place out in the west, I forgot what division, maybe in Oregon, where they actually, uh, the, 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 the deep uh, returner actually has a flag in his pocket that he can throw up in the air, and that's what declares a, uh, a, a catch. Um, I don't know if you heard about that. I was watching it uh, the other day, and uh, don't really like it, but yeah. I, didn't, I didn't see any clear signal there, Mike. <laughs> Here we go. Wing right, two in the backfield, ball under center, snap. Second guy through, that's Flanagan, right-hand side, wow. and maybe a yard, nowhere. Great job standing up defense, number 53. 53 again, Spencer Adams. Spencer Adams doing a great job standing up the, uh, the running back from uh, Exeter. What a great defensive play. So they show it as uh, second and ten, but it's, it looks like it's second and nine. Ball's on the 47-yard line with 13 seconds to go. They may not get this play off. Looks like the Gunno Exeter comes up. Yeah, they'll probably made baby Bailey. Straight T and no, ball's not going to take no, a, he's yeah, not going to take, take a play with four seconds to go, 2-1. And that's going to end the first quarter. No score at, at UNH Stadium, Durham, New Hampshire. Bedford 0, Exeter 0. Steve, your assessment? 
Uh, so far, I would say this game is uh, fitting the game plan and the hopes of uh, Exeter so far. Uh, Bedford clearly wants to come in here and, uh, and, and, and have the field wide open and keep it wide open because that plays to their strengths with a spread offense. Uh, so far, the defensive backfield for Exeter has done a pretty good job. Uh, Connor hasn't had a lot of open stuff to throw. Again, it's just coaching. It's pre preparation for the week. He hasn't had a lot of open stuff to throw, but he's had a tremendous amount of protection. He really hasn't been uh, no. flushed out of the pocket. So the offensive line for Bedford's doing a great well, job. Well, remember I said earlier they dropped it to a three-man uh, front. So that has a lot to do with that. Their idea is put some athletes back there uh, and, and stay close to the receivers. Keep them in front of you. And, uh, you know, Connor does not – Connor, I'm sure, has been working on his game plan all week with the coaching staff. Do not throw an interception. Do not throw an interception. He's being really careful at the beginning of the game. Doesn't want to give them some advantage on the field position or anything else. So we are going to start the second quarter here at uh, UNH Stadium. Again, brought to you by WBNH, Bedford 105.1 Radio, and uh, with Harry Kozlowski here, Bill Jennings is here, um, Chris Gentry, Pete Johnson, Steve Beals, and myself, Mike Robinson, welcome you to uh, UNH Stadium for the Division I Boys Championship game. And it's just so exciting. So many years, so many people have been waiting for the stadium to happen and to look out for it. It's just, it's just, uh, just great. All right, Exeter comes up. They're going to go a uh, wing right. We're going to have a uh, uh, guy to the right pitch over, and it's going to come this way. It looks like that's Lowry, and he's going nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. Great surge by the Bedford defense. Uh, linebackers are, uh, you know, real uh, are pursuing well there, Mike. Last uh, last two series. So this is going to bring up third down and nine. Balls on the 47-yard line with 11:42 to go in the second quarter. Exeter actually had a uh, wide receiver to the right trying to spread it out on that one, Steve. That was that was a new wrinkle. Yeah, I'm really I'm really surprised there hasn't been a counter called. Uh, Billy's usually Mr. Coach Ball usually calls a counter when they right. start over pursuing. Wing, wing to the right, two in the backfield, ball in the center. Snap, back, goes back to pass, looks down the middle, and that's a complete. That looks like it's going to be to number, don't have 80. Wow, didn't give him a very 89. good spot. That, that's a really rough spot. I thought he fell down about the 37, uh, 38 and a half yard line. That look, Evan Graham, was that number 88 for 88, Exeter? yeah, did a nice so, job, nice catch. Fourth down and one to go. Risky a, pass, risky yeah. pass by Kyle, but he nailed it. First, first. Now they're going to come out. They're going to. They need a yard to move the sticks. Exeter comes out straight. T ball in the center. Balls wait, wait, maybe waiting for Bedford to. And they call timeout. They're waiting for Bedford to jump. Yep. yep. Looking so. for Bedford to jump. I wonder what they're going to do. That I. I think. Uh, I, I, think I think he's going to kick it and going to pin him deep. Yeah. Yeah, why not? We talked about that earlier. You know, what are the percentages of going for it on fourth down around midfield? It's great if you move the sticks, but if you kick it, you're going to pin Bedford deep right. and make them go 85, 90 yards for pay dirt. And quite obvious, both of these teams trust in their defenses, and uh, that, that you're seeing that on the field by the decisions the coaches are making. Uh, looking smart coaching, looking to, to not give anybody else an advantage in a 0-0 game. You know, the old adage that you want to be in it in the fourth quarter, and that's what both these teams are trying to do. And if you were waiting for a shootout, high-scoring game, didn't happen, didn't break out yet. No, but as every minute that goes by, that, that puts the underdog in a better position because that is their game plan. Long, long drives. I mean... Bedford, I, uh, Bedford just is, uh, the defensive line is just uh, doing a great job when it means a lot. So Exeter is going for this thing. They're going to do a wing Surprise. to the right. And he goes off center, and I think he got a yeah, great. Yeah, he got it. Yeah, he got it. Yeah. He got it. Whoop. Ref's now walking it back a little bit. Ooh, boy, this is going to be Ooh, close. boy, he started out with a first down, but, oh, boy, wow. The spot isn't the best spot either. Gonna, yeah, good gonna, for Bedford gonna there. going to measure this thing. I just can't believe it. Second time in as many series that Exeter went on a fourth down and short. And now they're going to bring the sticks out and see. If you saw where he originally lined his right foot up, it's in about uh, another about almost a half a yard. So really surprising. Tail of the tape right here. But they're down there. They're right on it. They see where the ball goes. I think he may have it by a hair. It looks let's like a half a football. He's going to have it. Let's see. Sticks are down, and he's definitely got it. Yeah, yeah, half a football. Down. You got it. First down, Exeter. You know, Mike, I can't read what's in front of me here, but I can see like an eagle down the field. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome.
welcome. Isn't that welcome to be 50 or yeah, 50 plus, yeah, right? Yeah, welcome to the over 50 crowd. So Exeter gets a first down by the nose of the ball, and they're going to smooth the sticks. It's going to be on the Bedford 44-yard line. First and 10, 10.40 to go. Good Exeter. job by Bedford, though. Uh, they're, 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 making, they're making Exeter work for every single yard. Exeter breaks, single wing, two in the backfield, ball in the center. Ready for the snap, man in motion. Goes back to pass, looks over the middle, wide wow. open, and oh, Flanagan was wide open and he missed it. Boy, that was yeah, a breakdown in defense. Good pass, that's a touchdown. Uh, you know, that's what that's what the uh, play action pass does for you, Mike. It's so, you know, the, their first step is is forward to look at the run, and you put a guy through the center of the seam like that, and uh, boy, good good throw. Big break for Bedford. Yeah, big break there. That, that play is going to come out later on in the game. I yep. can guarantee you that. Yep, Coach Paul is going to tuck that in the back of his head and, and maybe toss that down the field in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Those are those big plays in the game that, like you well said, that you're going to remember there. So double wing now, single backfield. That's Lowry in the backfield, ball in the center. Ball waiting for the snap, man in motion. First man through is Lowry, breaks about three, and then immediately gets taken down by a swarm of Bedford defenders. Yeah, Spencer Adams again in uh, 53. Keep forgetting... Uh, Kids. Oh, 53 is uh, Spencer Adams. Spencer Adams, yeah. no, and 42, I meant. Uh, uh, 42 is Owen Brown. Owen Brown, yeah, good job. Those guys are coming up hard. Yeah. Great job of the linebacker core from Bedford so far. Of course, so the leader out there in the linebacker core. Um, third and 44. Third and seven is Canoni. Yep. Uh, Legacy kid. Yep. Third and seven, 948, ball in the 41. Straight T, ball into center. Goes back, second man through Flanagan, no ball kit, it runs with it, and he gets immediately taken down. Should have thrown, nice that, should have thrown, thrown that out of bounds. Yeah. He just lost uh, about five yards there. Rookie mistake for a veteran kid. Yep, yep. Throw that ball. They're so liberal today so when a quarterback gets outside the pocket. If there's anybody within 10, 15 yards, they let you do so it. Here we go, fourth and seven. Ball on the 41. Now, I saw them Good do a, stand do a fake. They did a, a direct snap to the up guy, Flanagan, during the Nashua game. So you yeah. gotta, you got to watch Flanagan. But we got... Um, Great job Cody, by the Bedford defense. Cody Moore set, ready to... Oh, we got a guy in motion. That's going to bring him back five yards. So the number 15 here in Exeter um, lost his balance and fell forward, and that's going to cost him 15 yards. I don't have the Exeter kid, number 15, but uh, that's going to cost him a motion call. Yeah. You mean uh, five yards? Five yards, yeah. Well, he was number 15. Number, Yeah, but you said 15 yards. I was going to say. 15 gets five. 15 gets five. There you go. <laughs> More set, ready to kick it away. Thank you for clarifying. At that. the 35-yard <laughs> line, back is Sharuk Hussein. And ball is back, up, nice kick. This kid can kick. Deep. Hussein takes it immediately taken wow. down the 10 yard line. That I haven't a, seen that uh, all year long with Hussein. Coverage. Have you ever seen that, Mike? No. Yeah, that's just that's just practicing shooting your vectors coming in from the outside, create a containment on a run. What a runner wants to do is to be able to step up and go outside. And great job. But great coverage for Exeter. That was that's what I mean, yeah. Flanagan back there. The kid who dropped the pass, so he made up on that one there. But so. again, little by little, this is playing into Exeter's hand with the idea of winning the field position game. Be Bed Bedford breaks, two to the right, one to the left. Have a tight end in. Robert ready to take it. Hands off to Leahy. Cuts it up to the 15, 16 yard line. Nice six yard game. Leahy cuts up field. He 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 knows with us. He sees the seam and he just he's so quick at turning it up. Watching uh, BG last year, Jackson Hausman, another one. I don't know if you remember that name. I do. Just a guy who would run lateral. He'd read his blocks and he would just cut up field. Playing for UNH here. Nice. Yep. Bedford breaks. They're going to send two receivers to the right, two to the left. Leahy in the backfield with Robert. Robert waiting the snap. Back. Robert looks. Fires to Shabrick. That hit no the ground good. incomplete. Yep. So they want to get a quick hitter out there because Exit is playing the ball, playing off the ball so much. Connor looks uh, very uh, concerned about throwing a pick, Mike. Uh, if you look at him, he seems a little bit, the, the footwork, he doesn't want to miss high, wants to miss low. Doesn't want to make a mistake uh, against this solid uh, Exeter team. Maybe a little bit of nerves. So Bedford breaks. Two to the right, two to the left. Leahy in the backfield with Robert. Ball is on the 16-yard line. Direct snap. Robert goes back. Looks right, looks right. Fires downfield. Wide open. Shuko saying hit him in the chest. Dropped it. 
That he's gonna he's gonna want that one back in his dreams. Yeah, boy, you, you, th there's two plays, one on each side of the ball. You're gonna remember. I mean, he hits a strike there. He's he's he he's so fast. He may have gone all the way too, Mike. He may have turned too before. Yeah, you know, before yeah. catching the ball. That's yeah. a classic. Uh, yeah. High school play, but we won't know that. Uh, kids might be a little nervous. Bedford's going to kick it away now, and that's going to be uh, Connor Crowley back, standing on his two-yard line. And I think you got Ball, and you got Flanagan back. Ball's away. Nice high punt, fair catch, and Exeter will take it at the Bedford 47 or 8-yard line. I don't know about you, Mike. Over the years, if you remember in the old days, you would give a guy three yards. Uh, of separation when he catches the sure, ball. Sure, right. And uh, for the last three or four years, I've noticed from at all level, all three levels of football, high school, college, and pros. They're in your pocket. They're literally in your pocket, yeah. and they're intimidating you, and the refs don't call it, and it, it just must be. It's got to be a rule. Because it's got to be a rule. I mean, usually yeah. if, it's three, if it's three or four yards, you've got to give it to them. But right, right. Here we go. Exeter's going to break with a straight tee, ball under center. Bedford ready to defend on the 48-yard line. 8.45 to go in the second quarter. Ball back, second man through. Lowry gets a few out down to the Bedford 45-yard line. One of the things that uh, you, you don't see happen with Exeter and other teams that is happening here today is they're getting through the line, but the linebackers are literally standing up uh, the three backs from Exeter. So instead of getting five, six yards falling forward, they're getting two and a half to three. And it, you don't realize it, but in the course of the game, it's changing it a little bit. It's making it more difficult. So going to be second and seven. Balls on the Bedford 45 with 8.16 to go. Straight T. Ball under center. Ready to take the snap. Snap. First guy through. Kamet gets to the 40, breaks it, gets to the Bedford 35, and gets a first down. You got to watch those quick hitters. Got to watch those quick hitters. I mean, I, I, you know me, Mike. I love hitting the line quick. Uh, absolutely. It gives your lineman an opportunity to really do a quick drive block and uh, create a quick scene, but you got to get through it. Can't fool around. And they don't do it on Exeter. They get right through the line. Again, good job, though. Even though it's a first down, Bedford is, is, is not catching people. They're standing them up. Moving the sticks. Ball's uh, on the 35 yard line, 7.52 to go. Straight T, ball under center. We're ready for the snap. Takes a snap. Second guy throws Lowry. Ball keeps it. Goes to the left hand side to the third, 25. Gets to about the 27 yard line of Bedford. Where well, we were talking earlier, I think these two quarterbacks uh, uh, in Division One are the best guy, best decoy fakers that, that there are. They just do a great job tucking it and run. And uh, they sell very well after so, the play. So dangerous that, you know, these quarterbacks that, that run this T, double wing, you know, I, I remember the T, you got to hit them. Hit them, yeah. hit them, hit them. Wherever he goes, you got to tackle them. Yep. So they come out again, straight T, ball under center. Ball's on the 27 yard line with 7.41 to go in the second quarter. Second man through Lowry, immediately hit and down. Maybe, maybe the line of scrimmage. Maybe the know. line of scrimmage. They again, Spencer Adams playing a terrific game, uh, comes in on that hit. He comes in full speed. And it looks like a Bedford player is down. I can't see who it is. Third and three with 7.30 to go. There's timeout on the field. Exeter. Yeah, it's Kyle Jalbert. Uh, I'll bet you he hurt that ankle again. Well, this is a kid who went, who yeah. was taken off uh, in the last game. Came out. We looked, We watched him. His ankle was heavily taped. We're not sure it's him. We can't see the... It uh, is. It is. And they're going to... It's Kyle. Letting him come up now. And yeah, yeah, it's so that right ankle. Yeah. Little, yeah, he's not putting any weight on no it. No so weight. He's gonna yeah, come it out. doesn't look good. So number 72 is coming in for Bedford, and who do you got for 72, Steve, on the Bedford uh, side? 72. Well, it used to be Bobby Heald. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. And, boy, what a great player he was uh, uh, sure. at, at the uh, Army uh, Academy. So 72 is now going to take the place of Jalbert. Looks like Christopher Francis. Francis comes in, number 72. Jalbert comes out. He's going to be done for the day. Yeah. They were trying to get a few uh, few quarters out of him. They almost got him to half. And, junior. Uh, he's, from, uh, he's coming out. From the junior class. All right. Exeter breaks. They kind of come out in the straight tee. Ball's taken under Yeah, boy, he's really, he's really limping. 27-yard line. Snap. Second man through. Ball keeps it again, and this time they Great swarm defense. him and bring him down for a loss of one. Be very interesting what they're, I'm sure they're going to go for it. I don't. I, I don't think he's got the leg to hit that kind of a. 
because they were actually on the 29 yard. They didn't go and far. It's interesting. They tried going to the uh, the side that Jelba came out of, and, yeah. and they stopped them. Spencer so. Adams, a linebacker core. I've, I've now mentioned the third time. Linebacker core for Bedford has really came to play today. And hopefully that was Francis that bottled him up the first time in. Yeah, so. yeah. Looking here, forward. Here we go. Exeter breaks. Going to be fourth down and about four to go. Balls on the 29. Straight T. Ball. Back. Fakes over the middle, tries to get it, breaks, and he continues to break it. I don't uh, think I he think, got it. No, no, they stopped him. No, they're giving him. Bedford, he tried to lunge no, forward, he and stopped. he didn't uh, get it. And I give the referees credit. They spotted it where he went. So that's a great stop. Uh, that's another play you can put in the list of a dozen Third during the game. time today. Yeah. Bedford stopped Exeter with fourth and short. Really uh, banging on Bedford door at, at the 29 yard line. Now Bedford's going to take over on their 26 yard line going from our right to left. It's the best I've ever seen. Uh, not ever. I should say this is the, the, the linebacker core from Bedford. And the safety coming up is just doing a phenomenal job. Bedford breaks. Two receivers to the right. Two to the left in the backfield. Quick pitch, Lagulon, right hand side, 30, 35, 40, quick hitter, yeah. nice 12 yard game. I like to play. I mean, you can do a couple things. You can run a screen, uh, you can do a play action pass, because it's not so much out of a spread, but, uh, or you can do a, you know, a, a misdirection play. And uh, there's no question, Exeter have been over pursuing the, on the defense the last set, and uh, Coach Dank staff saw it and went for it. Lagulon's a sophomore, he's a, he's a Gronk like player. You're going to see him for the next uh, two years after this year, so yep. that's going to be a lot of fun. Bedford breaks. Two to the right, two to the left. Leahy in the backfield. Hand off to Leahy, straight up to the 40, gets a couple, and then driven back. Yeah, there's no question. Both of these teams have uh, uh, just great hit wrappers and drivers. They're, they're, they're excellent tacklers on both sides of the ball. No matter how much we think about it, Mike, it's blocking and tackling. Everyone's bending, no one's breaking. And you're absolutely right. It's blocking and tackling, Steve. That's, that's the basic of football. And trying to throw in a couple of trick plays every now and then to move the sticks. Bedford breaks. They're going to send two to the right, two to the left. Leahy in the backfield with Robert. Robert takes a snap, fakes the handoff, takes it left-hand side, then fires over to the left-hand yep. side, tried to hit Smith incomplete. Got to watch for pick sixes on that one, Mike. You've got a guy coming to his weak side. Uh, the defender was coming up field. Very fortunate he didn't throw that down low enough because uh, the defender was in position to take it. So that was an incomplete. That's going to bring up third down and nine. Balls on the 40 with 540 to go. Hard to tell from him. Connor may have been just throwing that high to get it out of bounds. He, he may have just been getting rid of it. So anyways, Bedford breaks. They need this one to move the sticks. Bedford brings out Three receiver trips to the trips to the right, one to the left. Leahy in the backfield with Robert. Robert direct snap rolls to his right, rolls fires short pass yeah. up to Smith, but that's not going to get a first yeah, down. That's just great defense kick. on both sides of the ball. These are still these are very good offenses, and the defense is uh, and the game plans coming into the defensive strategy is just excellent. Execution on the field is great. Bedford's going to kick with both sides. Five thirty-six to go. Ball is on their forty-three yard line. Connor Crowley's back, and back for uh, Exeter is Flanagan in ball. They're at their 25-yard line. Crowley waiting for the snap. Ball is back. Kick is up, away. Nice, nice high, kick. deep kick. Fair catch by Exeter, Ooh. and they get it about the 21-yard line where they're going to take possession with 5.29 to go until half. little communication error there. Uh, the guy that fair catched it didn't catch it. That would have been that would have been a nice turnover. Yeah, that would have been great for if, Bedford if, if they could have. Bedford uh, fan. Wow. So now Exeter is going to take over, and uh, like I said in the last series, they went for it on their third attempt, and they they couldn't get the ball. Bedford just picked up short. 20 yards on the field position battle, though. Did a good job making up some room, making up some uh, some yard, some uh, field position there. Did a good job. Okay, we looks like we've got a. Wing right, ball under center. First guy through Camet, breaks through the line, then tackled out to about the 25, 26 yard line. Tackled by number 72. 72. 72. Made the tackle. There it is, Francis. Francis, what a great job. All of a sudden, Francis is in and in replace of Jalbert. Yeah. You're hearing his name a couple times. That's Big good. guy, but quick though, and uh, you know, it just shows you the depth that Bedford has as a junior coming up next year. Uh, made a nice play there. Bedford, uh, excuse me, Exeter breaks, straight T, ball into center, snap, 
First guy through, Cam, it breaks through, gets to about the 31-yard line before he's tackled, and that's going to bring up a... About two, I think. Fourth down and two. Third and two. Third and two, excuse me. So... Pretty good crowds here, Mike. Uh, good student sections at both on both sides of the ball. Listen, great crowd from Bedford. That that's a good good point, Steve. And of course, Exeter is only a stone's throw from here, and they've got they've got a good crowd on the far side. Yeah, great so, crowd, good both turnout. sides. Bands playing it up. Exeter breaks third and one. Balls on the 31 yard line. Straight T. Ball under center. Ready to take the snap. Snap is down. First man through. Kamet gets the first down. Going to yep. move the sticks and then swallowed up. Gets two well, yards. Spencer Adams is just, just, a boy. Kid plays with heart. Really, really enjoying watching him play uh, the last uh, three or four weeks and, and before. But, I mean, you start getting into playoff time and just the, 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 the good players really step up. 4.17 to go, and the clock is turning until halftime. Ball's on the 34-yard line of Exeter, going from our left to right. Exeter breaks. Wing T to the right, two in the backfield. Ball under center. Takes a snap. Pitches coming this way. That looks like Flanagan. He's going oh, to nice get a nice job lot. by Kyle Legg. That was Lowry, by the way, and he got hammered. Yeah, that was by Kyle Legg was 13. Boy, he's... Kyle just does a great job just covering that outside corner. He has sneaky speed. I mean, he doesn't. He, he, he looks fast, but he's quick as well. Defense. You know, there's fast and there's quick. He's got both. Yeah, and he's one of the defensive ends who came up and made the stop. That's key to stopping this offense. It really is. You're right, so Mike. We're going to hear... Uh, we're going to hear that name a lot during the game. So we've got now second down and 11. Balls on the 33. Exeter breaks. Looks like they got the uh, uh, single T to the right. Man in motion. Second man through. That's Flanagan. Gobbled up. No game. Wow. So now that's going to bring up third down. Very, very conservative play calling, Mike. When you think back in this game on both sides of the ball, especially Exeter, very conservative. Well, very rarely do they put the ball up, but this is an opportunity where they might put the ball up, trying to sneak one of the backs or a couple of the ends. You've got to look for Reeder. You've got to look for Graham. Um, in case our good friend uh, John Trishiani is listening, this is Trish ball. This is double wing John <laughs> Trishiani. How you doing out there, John, if you're listening? Coach Trish, all right. We love you, brother. Exeter breaks. We got a single wing to the right-hand side, two in the backfield. Ball under center. Snap. Goes back. Rolls near side. Looking. A lot of pressure. And now oh, he's open field. Go. He's got a guy. you got to watch him because he's going to throw. He's going to try and pump it. And Hussein comes up and knocks him out of bounds that's on a just, great defensive that's play. That's just great athleticism by Sean Ruk Hussein. That is a play right there. So Boy, Kyle is not an easy guy to open field tackle. So... Exit, wow. exit is not going to try their fourth <laughs> down in inches to go. So I have They're uh, punt away. I have uh, four big plays for Bedford uh, as it relates to you know one you remember and two for uh, for the Blue Hawks. Cody Moore set back to kick. He's on the 23 yard line. High snap brings it in. Pressure. Ooh. And right to Hussein, he's going to take it on the run, 35-40. Gets out to about the 43-yard line. Boy, that was close to running into the kicker on that one, Steve. Boy, I'll tell you, I'm surprised they didn't throw the flag there, but I think... Uh, good non-call? Good. I, I think it's a good non-call. It's a, it's a championship game. Unless it's blatant, you know, you, you let it go. Let the, let the guys play. Don't allow the referees to... to um, to, to make a call that changes the Bedford game. Bedford takes possession on their on their own 41-yard line, breaks the huddle. They got two to the left, two to the right. Looks like uh, Tierney in the backfield with Robert. Snap. Hands off to Tierney. Comes near side and, and hits once and gets gobbled up. Gets about a yard. Bounced off the first tackle and then fell forward for one. Both of these defenses uh, could just continue. Uh, to, to, to not break. I mean, they're, they're barely even bending. I mean, they're just doing a great job coming up. Good readers, good tacklers. Clock clicking away. Under two minutes, second down, nine. Ball in the Bedford, 42. Going from our right to left. Bedford in there, away black. Exeter in their home white. So now trips to the right, one to the left. Robert in the backfield with Tierney. Robert straight back, looks right, then goes left, fires left-hand side, and can, that nice catch by Shabrick. The big, big that's what I meant target. By, that's what I meant the other day, the other uh, couple of uh, possessions ago about t getting up with both hands. you yeah. got to get up with both hands, and Shabrick just hit it in the nose, right? I mean, just, just, just a great catch. Moves the sticks out to the Exeter 44-yard line. And very aware of where he was in the field, Mike. So Robert finds... Uh, that's a big First play. Down. Trips to the right, one to the left. Tierney in the backfield with Robert. 
139 to go. Robert straight back, looks right, looks right, looks downfield, straight, wide open again. Shabrick, and he just off his fingertips and almost intercepted. Yeah, but he made a good bid at it. I mean, that, he, he gave everything he had there. Two hands up in the air trying to make the catch. That's what you want to see out of your tall, excellent wide receiver. The ball was there on a rope, a little high, but possibly a catchable yeah. ball, but incomplete. No, no one, ball, no foul. No one questions Connor's uh, ability to fire no. a ball. I mean, he just hits a tunnel and pass, and... So Bedford breaks once again. They're going to go uh, empty backfield, trip to the right, two yeah. to the left. Robert back, looks right, looks right. Now he's going to run up the middle, up to the 40, breaks a tackle to the 35 and moves the sticks. First down, First nice down. run. Nice job by Connor Robert. There was nothing there, Mike. Absolutely nothing there. He saw a seam. Connor has a, a really good forward lean when he runs. It worries me, as you know, because I value the kid so much as a quarterback. So true. But, but this is a championship game. You can do whatever you have to do. First and, and ten. Uh, this is the time to expend it if you're going to do it. Ball in the 33-yard line, 121 to go to the half. Uh, two to the right, two to the left. Tearing the background. That's Smith in motion. Hand off to Smith, right-hand side. 25-30. 25-20. Now to the 18-yard line. Nice job by uh, Smith on that uh, on that run to the right. Yeah, I, I was surprised there wasn't a flag thrown there uh, against the offensive uh, player that was blocking number nine from the Blue Hawks. Uh, looked like looked like he had the outside of the shoulders and hold him, but you know what? Uh, it, it, at the end of the day, I just think he blocked him so well. Refs were right there. Didn't call it. Must have seen it. If it breaks, two to the right, two to the left. Keeney in the backfield with Robert in motion. Motion man coming this way. Hand off. No, Robert took it, went right-hand side and got about three yards. 52 seconds to go and counting, and we got a timeout on the yeah. field. Bedford's taking a timeout. Yeah, they're just excellent clock management by Bedford, by Coach Dank. Just outstanding job. Um, the fact that he's down in the 20-yard line and has a 50, uh, 51 seconds left, is it shows that the guys are getting out of bounds. The play calling is, is a two-minute drill type play calling, which preserves the clock for them. Nice job. Clock management is everything, because they got one timeout left. You don't want to take those into the locker room. There's 51 seconds to go until halftime, no score, yeah. balls on the 17, start using your head, try and conserve the clock, use those timeouts and try and get some points on the scoreboard before halftime. But the play calling that he's done is put them in position where they can get out of bounds, incomplete, and not burning out their timeouts. They're in great position right now. That's, that 51 seconds with still two timeouts remaining is a lot of, a lot of offensive opportunities there. So kudos to uh, the coaching staff there. So this is a real dogfight on our hands at the campus of UNH in Durham, New Hampshire on a beautiful, beautiful night. No precipitation. They thought we might get some rain. That's going to hold off for a little later. Under the lights, Division I Boys Championship doesn't get any better than this. No score, 51 seconds ago until half. No, it's a great, uh, great venue to play in, Mike, for high school football. Uh, there isn't one kid out in that field that's going to ever forget this. Bedford comes out two to the right, two to the left. Tierney in the backfield with Robert. Man in motion. That's Smith. Fake it. Robert fires left. Intercepted. Be it, uh, Exeter takes it the other way. 25-30 and then knocked out of bounds. That was a rare interception, but Exeter picked it off. That was 23 Flanagan. Connor Robert just may have saved his team from being 7-0. I mean, I, I, look, picks are going to happen in the game. It was a great job by the Blue Hawks of picking that ball off. He was very stealth when he's in the defensive position. Position. He was very, you watch him, you see the defender, you watch that, very stealth. And he picked Connor off, but what did Connor do? Ran him down and put him out of bounds. Yeah, Did, didn't watch his mistake, stayed nope. in the game, and, and like you said, saved seven. Did not watch his mistake, very well said. 44 yep. seconds to go till half, ball is now on the Exeter 32. And we got another timeout. Looks like Exeter's called their timeout. So yeah, I think Coach, Coach Ball, Ball smells something here. I think he, uh, you know, he's got what one left now. Well, he's got two left actually. That was his first uh, timeout. I thought that was. They've got him down with one left, Mike. Oh, they did, well, you know what? You're absolutely right. Yeah, he yeah. took one earlier. Yeah, he took one earlier. I was yeah, looking at, at, at the Bedford timeouts. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, I was cheating him a timeout. Even though Connor made a great play to, to uh, you know, after that to uh, take him out of bounds, that's a big opportunity loss oh, for Bedford right man, there. Tell me uh, about to it. be able to, I mean, w when you're a double wing team, where you don't, you like to play uh, even or ahead when you have that. You always, if you're even, you feel like you're winning, uh, and um, that was a missed opportunity by Bedford. No so question about you're, it. So you're play coach ball. You're the coach. You got 44 seconds to go. You're going to be conservative. Or are you going to try to put this down the field, Steve? I don't mean to sound boring, Mike, but going in zero zero, I'd be, I would be. Um, cautiously, cautiously aggressive. All right, <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm going the aggressive side. I think yeah. he's going to put it in the air. I think yeah. you're going to see that ball's going to roll out. I, 
Let me tell you why I don't think he will, and you're probably right. But if he was on the 45 or 50, I think he would. But he's down on his own 30-yard line with Oh, he's of. taking a knee. Yeah. <laughs> we were both wrong. <laughs> no, I wasn't wrong. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> I didn't think he was going to no, take no. a knee, but Coach he did. Ball, Coach Ball has a halftime of film, has a whole halftime to make adjustments, and he's going into this halftime saying 0-0, zero, zero, we won the first half. So, I mean, how could you not say that against this unbelievable offense so by Bedford? What, right? a, what a great first half of football. Bedford had an opportunity to put some points in the ball on the board. In a, a later interception by uh, Flanagan, and uh, now uh, Exeter's ready to take their second knee, and they're going to bring us into... Uh, I think this is where, and, and again, I feel both of these guys are championship-style coaches, but this is where championship coaching comes in. They, the, all the audience up there is probably saying, oh my gosh, go for it, go for it. But Bill Ball knows how to coach and manage a game. Yeah. He, he, to go half in 0-0... Zero, zero, zero. just went to halftime. Yeah. The clock just ticked away, and we're going to go uh, at... We're going to break for half. We've got uh, 20 minutes. The Bedford Band's going to come out. You'll be entertained by the that no score in the boys division one championship here at the campus of UNH um, in Durham New Hampshire and we'll be back after uh, after the band my name is Mike Robinson with Steve Beals thanks so much for listening so as you recall Bedford won the toss and they deferred so they are getting the ball in the second half and they're going to be going from our left to right and Exeter is about to kick off back for Bedford uh, ready to receive is um, that uh, one's uh, Sharuk Hussein, and I can't make out the other. Uh, who's the near side guy there, Steve? He's not turning. Um, I, can't, I can't make him out. 30 some, 32, Colby Smith. So 32, Colby Smith. So okay. same group, as yep. always. Just for so you folks are wondering out there in uh, Radio Land, oh. the hot chocolate and food at. Um, Delicious. At uh, UNH Field. Mike Roberts and Steve Beals give it a. Four, four, one. four out of five. Four out of five. There you yeah. go. <laughs> All right, here we go. The ball is up. It's deep. It's going to Colby Smith. He's going to let it go into the uh, back. So it's going to be a touchback. Bev is going to get it on the 20. Looking up at the flags, Mike, no wind. No wind. So... The, the elements are not a factor at all in the second half so that, far. That was Jake Gould that uh, kicked it into the end zone. Nice kick by yeah. Jake for Exeter. Yeah, Colby just looked at it and watched it sail. So first down and 10, ball's going to be on the 20. We're going to kick off the second half, no score. Uh, whoever draws first blood is going to definitely be in control of this game, Steve. So Bedford breaks. They got two receivers to the left. They got one to the right. Leahy in the backfield. Ready for the snap. Connor Robert back, hands it off to Leahy, left-hand side, positive yards, 30, 35-yard line, gets out to the 37-yard line, picks up about 16 yards, nice pickup. Yeah, and a great job by um, uh, Nick uh, holding onto the ball because they had two guys on him holding and stripping, Trying to strip. and he held onto the ball tight. That's, so, what the, that's what that extra couple of pumps in the weight room will do for you. So uh, positive yards for Bedford on their first possession of the second half. 11.46 to go. Ball's on the 38-yard line of Bedford. They take two receivers to the right, two to the left. Leahy in the backfield with Robert. Direct snap. Robert pitches over to Leahy. Comes this way near side. Get, turns the corner to 40. 45. Gets out to the 50 before he's tackled out of bounds. And that's uh, number 15 for Exeter on a, on a nice uh, open uh, field tackle to bring him out of bounds. Okay, what does this tell you? Uh, obviously, the Bedford coach coaches didn't go in there and worry about anything. They got to work. And what they looked at is they looked at uh, what sort of blocking schemes will work and they're attacking the outside. Zach Knight with the uh, saving tackle for Exeter. And the Goulons running off field. There's some confusion out there. Trips to the left, one to the right. Leahy in the backfield with Robert. Direct snap. Hands off to Leahy. Left-hand side. Breaks up maybe three, four yards. Gets out to the Exeter 45-yard line. Hard yardage by Leahy there. He, he lowered his shoulder and Second down, six yards to go, 11-20. Ball is on the exit of 45-yard line. Bedford breaks, two to the right, two to the left. Leahy in the backfield, Robert, direct snap back. Looks near side and throws it incomplete to Liam Green in the flats. Yeah, got to hit that pass there. That would have brought him within a yard. Um, <clears throat> got to start hitting those. Going to be third down and six to go. Ball's on the 45-yard line. Bedford breaks, two to the right, two to the left. Leahy in the backfield with Robert. Robert waiting for the snap. Spread offense. Big play here. Snap back. Hands off to Leahy. Near side coming this way. Breaks out to the 40. First down. Gets to it. the 38-yard line. Nice job. Yeah, getting Nick Leahy outside was obviously a, 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 an adjustment that uh, 
Coach Dank and his staff made, and it's working for him. Quick hitter near side for the first down, moving the sticks. That's what Bedford wanted to do. Second half, 11 02 to go. Balls on the 37 yard line. First and 10. Bedford in there. Away black moving from our left to right. Bedford spreads two to the left, two to the right. Quick substitution. Lagulon in. Tight end. Going to be in on the left hand side. Bedford switching. They better hurry up. Now they got two to the right, two to the left. Robert in the backfield. Hands off to Leahy. Come near side. 35 30. Breaks 25. Nice field. Nice pickup. Leahy didn't get even touched until he got 18 years. So there's a lot of blocking going on here. Uh, great job pinching the ends on this. And also a great job of the uh, receivers doing an awesome job at blocking. How about, how about halftime adjustments for Bedford? Yeah, halftime adjustments for Bedford are, are, are great. Ball is on the 24-yard line with 10.26 to go in the third quarter. First and 10, Bedford. Bedford breaks, sends one receiver to the left. Now we got two to the left, two to the right. Leahy in the backfield with Robert. Robert, direct snap. Hands off to Leahy, near side, coming this way again. 20, 15, flag down. Holding. Inside the 10, ball is on the ground, and Bedford recovers, but holding on we're going to get, we're gonna get a holding call. Yeah, that's a very costly error. It wasn't a holding that was needed. Uh, and those are the worst types. That's Jacob Collins if it's on 52. Yeah. He's not happy. Yeah, he's not, but he held him. It, it, he pulled him right down to the ground with, with both hands. That's but, a very costly penalty, Mike, because uh, Leahy was down to what? I think about the eight-yard line. Eight-yard line. Yep. And... Uh, Fumbled the ball, recovered by Bedford, but it doesn't. Yeah. It, it did. It did matter because yeah. that uh, that penalty is going to march it back from the spot of the foul, and I got a flag now about the 23 yard line of Exeter, so they're going to mark that back. Really like the way the refs have called this game. They've let these kids play, and 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 that was just a blatant hold there. Uh, but they've let a lot of the little shaky, little pinchy stuff go, and that's what I it just in a championship game. That's the way you want it called. 10-yard penalty, going to bring it back to the 33-yard line. First and 19 to go, 10.06. Bedford spreads two to the right, two to the left. Lee in the backfield, man in motion. That's Hussein. Hand off to Hussein. No, Robert kicked up the middle. Almost broke free, but he got uh, about yeah. nine nine of those back. Looks like the ball was yeah. on the ground, but Robert has it. Yeah, he's such a tough kid. He's got to learn to go down, though. When you take that hit and they've wrapped you up, just go down because you don't want to get an ankle twist or a leg twist or what have you. Such a great fake. I had a hand off to Hussein, and Robert took it up the middle, so pretty pretty shifty. But in this game, you got to, Robert's got to be part of the running game. 9.35 and counting. Balls on the 25, second and 11 to go. Bedford threatening. First possession of the second half. They break the huddle. Two to the left, two to the right. Leahy in the backfield with Robert. Waiting for the direct snap. Robert fakes to Leahy. Looks right. Fires right. Uh, Green gets about three yards and gets down to about the 22-yard line. Nice Liam tackle Green. by Kyle Ball playing both ways in this game. What an athlete. He's a stud. He's a stud out here. He's the quarterback. He's a D-back. Uh, he's a punt returner. He's a great athlete. And he's getting a full ride to UMaine to play baseball. Okay. So, great athlete. Yeah, he'll be a good black bear, no doubt. Bedford breaks. Again, two to the left, two to the right. Lay in the background. Third and nine to go. 9-16. The clock is running. Hussein in motion. Fakes. Robert looks left. Fires left. Wide open is touchdown. There you That's go. Noah Shabrick. Nice fake on the handoff to Hussein and Noah Shabbat. Noah was within 10 yards of him. Nice draw. Yeah, Bedford draws first They were ready, Mike. Uh, the, what, uh, Connor uh, got that ball snapped off quickly. Defense was not ready. They didn't even pick him up out wide. I think if you see the film, you'll see that nobody really picked him up. And nobody, the safety didn't move over. Uh, defensive coach has got to call a timeout on that play, Mike. Okay, Bedford. Great job by Bedford. Bedford's looking at the point after. Ready for the snap, ball is down, kick is up, and it is... Right down the middle. Good. And that is Connor Crowley. Yeah, now you're going to see Connor. Uh, Connor's confidence now is going to go up. This is what he wanted. All you got to do is give this guy a crack of light, so and uh, talk he's going to open the jaw. Talk to me how big those adjustments were, because obviously Bedford saw something on the X of the defensive side, and they basically ran that ball down the field, which included a 10-yard penalty well, the, against the, Bedford. There were two things there. Not only was it the adjustments as far as the play calling and, and the point of attack, uh, trying to get Nick outside and really focusing on downfield blocking with the receivers, there's another thing that we uh, that you may realize is pace. The pace of that offense went much quicker. Great Inst point. Instead of having 25 seconds between uh, plays, they had about 12 to 15. I was counting in between, and that created a situation where uh, the defense of the Blue Hawks wasn't able to get into position and anchor in. And that's what happened in that last play blatantly. 
So Exeter is back. Ball's back there. Flanagan's back there. Um, and we got Joe Aiello ready to kick this thing off. Number 10. And again, Bedford uh, Exeter is going to be going from our right to left. It's 9-11 to go in the third quarter. Bedford drawing first blood and up 7-0 in the Division I Championship Boys Football at UNH. And, and how Exeter responds is everything. Ball's away. It's not that deep. It's going to take about the 20-yard line. Coming up to the 25-30, couple blocks. Gets to about the 35-36 yard line. It's safe return. Good field position. So the Blue Hawks here, Mike. This is it. I mean, they, you, you got to respond right now, or you give the ball back to Bedford when they're rolling. Uh, could get, the game could look, could could really get a develop a margin here. So this actually, you're absolutely right. This defensive stand for Bedford is so critical. If, they can, if they can get uh, Exeter, especially with the halftime adjustments, but if Exeter then turns around and marches down with their halftime adjustments, then we get a whale of a game. So we got a single wing to the right, two in the backfield, ball over center, balls on the 36-yard line, snap down, second guy through. That is Flanagan. Great job. And this he 72. Goes down. 72 again. Actually, that was Brad Kamet. Check that, number 24. 8.55 to go. Set. Yeah, that's Francis. That's Francis, <laughs> my man. Francis, who came in for an injured Jalbert. Yeah, boy, when you got backups like that, you got some depth. And a kid off the bench having, yeah. a, uh, having a career game for himself. So that was no gain. So it's going to be second down and 10. Straight T, ball under center. Uh, ball ready to take the snap. Fakes there, goes near far side, rolling, rolling, keeps it, tucks it, comes up field, gets to the 40, keep moving, gets to about the 45 yard line of Bedford. Nice gain, about eight yards, close to the first down. Yeah, the, the inability of the backs of Exeter uh, not to be able to get any significant yardage here is going to begin to take its toll because it can't be Kyle Balls, the only one that's running down the field. Got to work some Got to work some offense here if you're the Blue Hawks uh, spreading it out a little bit. To the 46-yard line of Bedford, Exeter going from our right to left. Again, straight T, ball under center, takes the snap. Second man through, coming this way is Flanagan. Looks like he's going to move the sticks first time. He got a couple. Excellent pulling by the uh, uh, by the guard, the, the left guard from. Uh, uh, let me find him there. Well, wait till he gets. I'll get his number. He did a great job. You talk about uh, stepping aside and working his way upfield, get some lead blocking yeah, it's in gonna there. Be, it's going to be either Fromley or early seventy or seventy-two on yeah. the left-hand side. Great job. So seven forty-three to go. Balls on the Bedford forty-seven yard line. Kids quick. Wing T to the right, two in the backfield. Ball on the center. Ball takes a snap, first man through his cam, it breaks through three or four yards and then dragged down, gets to about the Bedford, excuse me, it is, now it's in Bedford territory to the 49-yard yeah, line. Well, yeah, I had that I had that on the other side. Cam, it's uh, good. Uh, th th I mean, those three backs have got to start getting in this game and it's got to start working for yardage. Second down and six. Ball is now into Bedford territory in the 49-yard line with 7-12 to go. Clock is ticking. Straight T, ball in the center. Ball ready to take the snap. Snap is down. Second man through. Ball third man through. Ball takes it and falls forward and gets hit two or three times. He got down to about the Bedford 46-yard line. Yep. That's going to bring up third down and about four to go. Kyle's got to be uh, careful, just like Three. Connor does, of ex overexpending energy and putting himself in harm's way. He's been taking some hits. I've been yeah. watching him coming over. He comes over every play like like Robert does to get it from the sideline from Coach Ball and back. He goes, no relation, by the way, between no. Kyle Ball and Coach Ball. Every, you're hard telling people that because <laughs> they don't buy it. <laughs> they don't buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Third and three, ball's on the 46, 631 to go. Now we got a wing tee to the right. Ball in the center, first man through Kamet, breaks through, gets a first down, and yeah, close to the first down. Yeah, I think he's got it. I mean, I, I know we got a first down, but Bedford's uh, uh, defensive linebacker core and overall defensive back core on the run has just done a fantas fantastic job of, of, of uh, coming up and not allowing any big plays to break. Gets it to Bedford 42. That first hit of Kamet coming through is a tough kid. If you miss him, he's going to get three or four positive yards. And if he gets to the secondary, he's gone the distance. So, got to be tackling everybody coming through. Straight T, ball in the center, balls on the 42, 6.04 to go. Snap down, second man through, that's Flanagan right-hand side, now cuts over positive yards, gets about five or six on that one. 
So well, um, Spencer Adams and Sean Rook Hussein, just tremendous defensive positional football, Mike. They still they instead of over pursuing and leaving that cutback, he stayed in his trenches and and that otherwise that's a touchdown right there. Great job. Yeah, and Exeter again methodically moving the ball down the field. Now they're at the Bedford 35 yard line. Uh, second down, third to go. 5:33 to go in the third quarter. Straight T, ball into center. Takes the snap. First man through Kamet, right hand side, and he's, he's, he's dragged. He's close to the be first real down. Close. Depends on where the spot is. I, I I think he's a little short, but no, I think he's got it. He's I've, got it. I haven't called that right all day. Well, I'm just trying to be wrong, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't called that right all year. You know, one time I thought I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. And I was right. Actually, I think I'm supposed to say the opposite. What, one time I thought I was... No, I don't know what it is. Anyway. Anyways, uh, they're bringing the sticks out to measure. This is going to be right, a close Mike, one. Make me wrong. I, he may be, he I, I, think he's, I don't think he has. I think he's, I think he's right. off by a nose. All right. All right. I don't see much chain left there, Mike. We'll so see. We're gonna, they're stretching it, Ooh. and in fact, he is Ooh. short. short. Ah, I am by short right, by what a are nose. We one and one now? <laughs> All right. Two out of three and before the end of the game. All right. So now this is going to bring up third down and in inches ball on the 33 512 to go Exeter again moving from our right to left in their home white Bedford defending in their away black with red trim Bedford leading 7 nothing. if you're just tuning in first drive of the second half Connor Robert to Noah Shabrick wide open the end zone point after Bedford up 7 zip okay Exeter up Straight T, ball under center, snap, first guy through Kamet. Yeah, he, he broke it. it. He got it. Kamet's got to lower himself down a little bit, though, Mike. Uh, he uh, uh, standing up a little high there. you got to be careful. Some helmet comes in, knocks that ball loose. Boy, I'll tell you what. They're, they haven't moved those sticks yet. But uh, I, I thought he definitely had oh my it. Gosh. Yeah, they got it. Yeah, yeah. of course, yeah. yeah moved he was over by a yard, a uh, full yard. So but Bedford, Bedford uh, defensive uh, front as well as the linebacker core. Just, I mean, the Blue Hawks uh, offense is designed to work hard, but I'm telling you, they're really making them work. So here we go. Um, ball brings out Exeter. Straight T under center. Second man through. That's Lowry. He gets to the third, and he's swallowed up by a ton of Bulldogs. So two, looks like. That's going to be 442. The clock's going. It's going to get to the Bedford 30-yard line. Double wing, single wing T burns the clock. Second down and eight. Short gain on that one. Lowry coming through. You got to watch Lowry. Got to watch Cam. You got to watch Flanagan, and then you got to watch Ball. Tough offense to defend. Straight T once again. Ball under center on the 30-yard line. Ready for the snap. Snap down. Second guy through is Flanagan getting some positive yards. Yeah, Billy Ball's playing total four down territory right now. So he, he, what he's looking for is to, he's okay with getting it, you know, fourth and one and getting it. Um, We're going to call this third down and what do we got? Referees really slowing this game down with ball spotting. I mean, there's balls a on the 28, third and six. Two down territory for sure for Exeter. Have you seen a counter all game uh, from, that, from the Blue Hawks? I have not. And that's a, you better better look out for that one. The double reverse. I've seen that one against Nashua. Single wing, two in the backfield. First guy through Kamet. Pulls forward for a couple yards, but he's going to be short. So this is going to be fourth down and about four, three. So 3.25 to go. They're spotting the ball on the Bedford, looks like the 25, 26 yard line. So it's going to be th with 313 in Exeter. Now, here we go. Is this their fourth or fifth attempt, that fourth down? Fourth attempt. Well, that's why I said, Harry. I mean, he's made a decision, Coach Ball, to just go four down all the way down. He's, he's running his offense. Four and four. We got a uh, Big play. two in the backfield, man in motion. That's Flanagan. And then ball rolls back, rolls to his far side, goes to throw, and it's going to be picked off. That's picked off Bedford coming this way. Beats one tackler, and that's Sharuk Hussein. He's got to hang on to that ball, but they got to blow the whistle because there's too many guys around this, and he did blow the whistle. Doesn't matter much, really. <laughs> I mean, if you were, he wasn't going to get the first down. He threw it. If anything, he, you know, I'm not sure a punt that would have made much difference. 
Yeah, so so so, so here's a great, an interception. So here's a great point. As an interception, you want to get it, but really you should have knocked it down and got the ball back. However, you probably should have knocked it down. Yeah. As a high school kid with the ball coming, the eyes yeah. are wide open. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna take yeah. it. And I want it, my name in the it, paper. It still shows an interception <laughs> on the stat sheet. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Bedford's going to take over on the interception by Sharuk Hussein. First and 10, balls on the 14, 241 to go in the third quarter. Now moving from our left to right. Two to the right, two to the left in the backfield. Robert goes back, hands to Tierney. Tierney, left-hand side, gets to the 20-yard line. Good pickup. That's a, Norman, that's a Norman Rockwell backyard picture right there. Sean Tierney carrying three guys who's got a hold of his shirt, and he keeps on pulling. All year long, this kid's been a bull. If he you need short yards, you're going to give it to Tierney. You're at the goal line, you want to run in a couple, you're going to give it to Tierney every single time. Great work ethic, smart athlete. <laughs> Very good lacrosse goalie. Kid who had a broken leg in the offseason, or, uh, or knee surgery. Knee surgery, yeah. Yeah, yeah. both a him and Leahy. MCL, I believe. Yeah. Bedford breaks. Okay, Tini in the backfield. Two to the right, two to the left. Robert ready to take the snap. Direct snap back. Looks near side. Fires. This is over. Uh, caught. Oh, that's, that's great Shuru defense. Hussein. That's a good tackle. Wow, that ball is something. That kid ball is something. Did you see him get off of that block? And that's not an easy block to get off of uh, there with number by number 11, uh, Liam Green. I don't think there was a gain on that. Third and, yeah, maybe a yard. Third and three. Balls on the 23. Looks like a little less than. Look, I'm going to move it up, Mike. Bedford, yeah, maybe two yards yeah, to go. Two. Uh, with 138 clock ticking, balls on the 22 yard line. Tierney in the backfield with Robert, two so, to the right. So a big play. Two man. to the left. Robert direct snap near side, coming this way, gets to the 25, breaks over to the. That's a first down. Nice yeah. job by Connor Absolute Robert. Absolute great job, and he, he knew he knew cutting inside he could fall in and get it. Such a weapon, just like Kyle Ball on the other side. We've yep. got Connor Robert on this side who's not afraid to tuck it and run. Nope. But the difference is, Robert can chuck it downfield. We haven't seen Kyle Ball do that. No, we He's have not. Tuck it and run. No, I mean, I mean, they had a touchdown pass here in the middle there in the first end of the first quarter, and uh, just an Tierney pass. in the backfield with Robert, two to the right, two to the left. Man in motion. That's Hussein. Hands off to Hussein. Far side gets He's to got the a 30, seam. He's got 35, a 40, up to the 44, three yard line. Nice pickup. Great pickup. Um, I like the play call. I thought they had it defended. It looked like they knew the play, but... Flag is down, however. Yeah, the blocking. I, I'm not sure that... It's looking like it's on... It's way in the back. No, they're moving boy. it back. They're moving it back. That, that's almost where the quarterback was. I, I, I can't imagine... No, that I think... Remember I told you that he, the, the, uh, yeah. the linebacker, outside linebacker came up and attacked the, uh, the man in motion, Sean Rook. Uh, yeah. And the blocker, uh, when Sean Rook cut inside of it. It looked like the uh, defender was trying to get in and he couldn't. That's it looked like it was being held. Here's the call. What do we got, Steve? Yeah, if we it's not holding, I'll be surprised. Block in the back or holding. It's against Bedford. Yeah. doesn't yeah, matter. It it's be that was at the point of attack. Ten yards from the spot and the flag's at the 22-yard uh, line. So that's going to go back to about yeah. the 12-yard line. That's a costly penalty and there. And it's going to be uh, first down in a bunch. So here's a time where uh, Coach Stank, with his years of experience, you know, you, you, gotta, you, you can't uh, go so ball is on the punt it out, punt it out. Twelve yard line. It's actually first down now. So they got about first and about twenty. Direct snap to Robert. Hands off to Tierney. Left hand side. And he's met with a uh, slew <laughs> of Exeter takes, defenders. Takes four Blue Hawks to bring <laughs> him down. One guy was tugging on his back. One was tugging on his side. Well, it reminds me of one of those National Geographic scenes where you see it's like eight tigers trying to tackle an elephant. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they got five of them on the tail. This kid is strong as a bull. <laughs> It's great. Great kid, too. N nice, uh, great teammate. You talk to, talk, know some kids that have played with him in both sports, and uh, just say he's a great kid, great so teammate. Ball is on the 15 yard line of Bedford, and it is second down and 19 to go. Two to the right, two to the left. Tierney in the backfield with Robert. Robert direct snap, looks near side, looks down the center, fires down the center, and it is almost in and out of the hands, and almost in and out of the hands of a, of Kyle Ball, too. Del a lot of delay, a lot of happy feet. Uh, it's just not a... The, the Bedford uh, passing for game is for, yeah, for Smith. It's just not, it's not clicking. The timing's off. Um, I'm going to start watching if the receivers are getting hit at the line, Mike. I don't believe so. It looks to me like they're backing off. But So now it's third down, 19 to go. Balls on the Bedford 16. That holding penalty was, was, oh, that was huge, huge because we had a first down. It was a spot foul. It just put us in a hole. Yep. 23 seconds to go in the third quarter. And uh, 
Robert is bringing the play into the huddle. Bedford breaks. Yeah, my expectation here is you're just going to see him call a screen or something like that. Tierney, uh, Tierney to in the backfield. Back. Two to the left, two to the right. Robert ready to take the direct snap. I think you'll see a screen. Snap back. Robert near side coming this way. Looking to throw. Throws out and incomplete. Yeah, there's a field position. Um, I mean, that, that's going to be, be very interesting to see the kicking game here, Mike, and how they cover because uh, the Blue Hawks are going to get some good field position to come back. So punt, 19 seconds. Punter Connor Crowley will have his work cut out for him to see if he can get a boomer off. And he, he can hit him. He can, can punt him. So Flanagan in ball, deep for Exeter, about the fifth midfield. Crowley waiting the snap. It's fourth down, 19 seconds to go. Snap is back. Kick is away. It's up. It's a nice, oh, nice high, kick. booming kick. Ball goes back. Let's it bounce. Sort of takes an exit of bounce. That's too bad. And Bedford Kid jumps on it at the 14 yeah, good job jumping three on yard it. line. Good job. That was, uh, That's a good kick, though. They got a lot of yardage uh, out of that. Uh, looks like they got about 40 yards out of that, Mike. Yeah, so covering from Bedford was uh, Ryan Toscano. I think he's the holder out there, and he did a nice job covering yeah, on getting that. getting downfield. So, no Ex Exeter with decent field position now to take over in with nine seconds to go in the third quarter in Bedford. Uh, winning this game at, by a score of seven to nothing and on nobody's a nobody's uh, left. Noah Shabrick touchdown. Nobody's yeah. filing out here. So we got a uh, wing right, two in the backfield. Ball on the center. Snap. Flanagan far side cuts oh. to the 40. Cuts That's up to about. Gets back to almost the line of scrimmage. Great job by Spencer Round. Did you see him contain that nice play? Nice job. Mike? Just what a great job. This kid yeah. is just. So much of this defense is just, they've all played well. And, uh, so here it is, Steve. We've got 12 minutes to crown a champion. Bedford's on the positive side of a 7 nothing lead with three quarters in the books. Sorry, Dad, I can't get it. Spencer Adams, not Spencer Allen, excuse me. Spencer Adams just playing his heart out today. Yeah, um, Mike, I mean, what, what more do you want here? I mean... You oh, listen. It's it, just as good football. Great football. And again, brought to you, Bedford 105-1, the uh, great radio station um, uh, managed by Harry Kozlowski and doing a great job in, in bringing this game, which according to NHIA rules, we couldn't bring BCTV in here, but Bedford charged in with Harry in the radio, and we're glad to bring this back as to well Bedford. As well as cameraman, station manager, and our limousine service, Bill Jennings, providing Bill, all three of those services for us today. Bill Jennings. Chris Gentry, Pete Johnson, Steve Beals, I'm Mike Robinson. We're all thrilled to be here. We've got 12 minutes to go to crown a champion. Bedford leading 7-0 on a great catch by uh, by Noah Shabrick all alone in the end zone. Robert the Shabrick and point after 7-0 Bedford. And Harry Kozlowski, I don't know what that sandwich was, that Dunkin' Donuts sandwich he had in the back, but let me tell you, that was a good smelling sandwich. But he wasn't looking to offer us any, so Mike and I had to come to UNH and like Un unload on the uh, cafeteria down there. Did a great job. Here, here we go. <laughs> Kyle Ball brings him out. Straight T. Going from our left to right. Second man through. That's Flanagan. Met at the line. Uh, maybe a couple yards. Who's that? Number 53? I think that is. I can't read it. Yep, 53. For who? For Bedford. Nice tackle there. Uh, Spencer Adams. Spencer, Spencer Adams again. Yep. So, um, Owen Brown, uh, I was a mistake. That uh, defensive end uh, play that uh, the containment was not Spencer Adams. It was Owen Brown. So Owen Brown, 42. Out Br Owen Brown. Okay. Don't want to get any bad calls after the game from folk from parents. Exeter breaks. Single wing. Two in the backfield. Ball under center. Ball takes a snap. Fakes comes back this way. He's immediately brought uh -huh. down on a great open field tackle. And I that's, believe that was Kyle Legaquist. That's 13. Who's Kyle been, played a tremendous game all game long. He's been solid, and this kid's got a this kid's got a motor. This kid, this kid watched some film, and he knew that when uh, Kyle Ball was going to do the fake, he was going to go around the end. And Legaquist with a huge bring down, forcing Exeter to great punt. Great job. Hussein is back. You can feel some stuff happening here. Cody Morissette ready to punt it away for Bedford. We do have a timeout. Bedford. Bedford, yep. Yep. So Coach Stank elects to take one of his three timeouts. Don't understand that timeout call, Mike, but maybe there was some guys out of position or 
had too many guys in the field. I don't know, but uh, maybe just wanted to talk to the team, make sure not, it may be nothing more him understanding that these are the special teams that you do not want to lose and have a, a game breaker. So this could be just getting his, his troops in order. He might be reminding the kids, too, that uh, Exeter does a fake kick, fake punt, yep. and it goes a direct yep. snap to, yep. to uh, Flanagan yep. and the near side, and, and up he goes. So maybe he's just reminding his yep. guys to stay home, yep. make sure that ball gets back to the punter, Cody Morissette, for Exeter. Well, I think Coach is very aware of how special teams can change a game on a dime. And uh, he knows that uh, points are coming hard, and uh, these seven points were hard earned, and, and he's trying to make sure that. Uh, Sharuk Hussein is deep for Bedford, down at his own 30. Cody Morissette ready to take the snap. Be surprised if they don't try to kick snap it. Snap is kick back. It away from Cody catches it, booms it. No, a towering a kick. Good kick. good kick down to about the 35 yard line. Yeah. Goes out of bounds to 34 He'll yard line with Bedford's going to take long. over. Yeah, Sean Ruku saying you do not want to let him run the ball back if you're up down 7 0 with Bedford. Uh, so this is really, a, this is the defensive stand that uh, the Blue Hawks have got to come through here and uh, be very interesting the strategy. I, I, I would imagine they're still, they're still going to try to get Leahy outside, Mike. So uh, Bedford now is going to take possession. They got yep. two to the right, two to the left in the backfield. Looks like Leahy fakes it, comes back far side, cuts it up, 35, gets to the 40, runs into the 45 to the 47 yard line. Nice pickup. Yeah. Now, how about Sean Ruk Hussein? One, probably anyone could argue could be the best athlete in the whole field. And Sean Ruk Hussein is downfield blocking with with a vengeance down there. That's the kind of unselfish play and execution that uh, that the coaching staff breeds and has bred in these kids. You've seen it all year long. Nick did a nice job following that block outside too. Bedford's winning so the edge. I imagine they're going to keep attacking him. Lay in the backfield with Robert. Two to the right, two to the left. Man in motion. Hussein hands off to Hussein. Coming near side. 50. Cuts it up. 45. Gets to the 43-yard line of Exeter. Nice play. This is just great adjustment. Continuing on the on what was done in the in the uh, halftime with the coaching staff. They saw something, and it's working every single time. Bedford's giving Exeter a little dose of their own reality, keeping it on the ground and moving the sticks. Yeah, well, why, and now you're in a situation where Coach Stank wants to burn the clock. Ten. Plenty of time left to go, though. You can't be too conservative. you got to keep moving forward and shoving it down their throat. Yep. They're going to win this thing. 10.09 to go. Ball's on the 43-yard line. Leahy in the backfield. Two to the right, two to the left. Robert, snap. Goes far side, gets to the four, coming over the 40, turns the corner, jumps the play, gets the 40, and then Bryden, nice tackle, wow. open field tackle. Who was that, 15? That's 15 for um, Exeter. That's Zach Knight. What, Zach a, great, Knight. what yeah. a great athletic defensive play there. Uh, never looked at anything but the hips. Wasn't going to get juke, wasn't going to get fake, came right in and really made a big play there for him. Second down and six, balls on the 39-yard line of Exeter. Bedford moving from our right to left here at UNH Stadium in Durham, New Hampshire on a beautiful night for Division I boys football. 9.27 to go. Leahy in the backfield. Two to the right, two to the left. Direct snap. Robert fakes right, pumps right, fires downfield and... Don't know what he was throwing there. Uh, looked like uh, that was made for him to stop and go for number, I Not, that's that 11, number 11. That's, that's Liam Green. And, and Liam Liam's Green. holding his arms up like he got held, and he went to the official, but the official <laughs> had nothing. Oh, all right. Yeah, I mean, that was clearly a play where he was supposed to uh, stop, you know, uh, stop, so, turn around, and go. But, at, you know, after five yards, you can't hit the kid. And if that's what happened, then the official missed yeah, it. Yeah, missed it. I didn't see it. I have to look at the well, film. Well, they but can make a judgment that's incidental contact. There's no question this coaching staff is leading on the airing on the side of uh, letting it go. So third and six, ball stops, uh, the clock stops at 9.18. Uh, Leahy in the backfield, two to the right, two to the left. Now here's a double reverse. This Lagulon coming far side, break, five or six guys trying to bring him down close to the sticks. I don't think he's got it. But he's within what a great effort. two yards. <laughs> so a little shuttle pass. There was a reverse shuttle pass back far side to Lagulon. I'm, sure I'm not sure if that, I'm not sure if that, and, I, and I'm, I'm being honest. If that T-shirt had been tucked in, I think he would have got a first down. I'm serious. I, I think what happened was they got a hold of it, and uh, they were able to hold him down long enough. Boy, I'll tell you, he runs hard yeah. and strong, doesn't Gr he? Gronk-like. Gronk-like. Very, I li very I like strong this kid. young o man. Only a sophomore. Yeah. So we got a few years. He comes off the field now, Lagulon, and uh, yeah. lay in the backfield. Again, Bedford spreads it two to the left, two to the right. Can't believe they're going and for in it. in motion, and Robert's going to take it up the middle. He's met, and he stopped. I don't understand that, but I guess they just, what the heck, it's on the 32-yard line. But in that situation, you could have pinned him deep, Mike. 
Yeah, a little surprise there. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but you know, time and time again, that play works for Bedford. But Exeter sniffed it out and stopped Robert. They they had Robert keyed in the whole time. So Exeter stops Bedford on a fourth and one to go with 8:29 to go, and they take over. Now they're going going to be going from our left to right. And you know the way they burn up the clock, they may have one or two <laughs> possessions left in them, Exeter. So yeah, here they come out with a straight T. Ball under center. Ball takes the snap. Goes back to fast. The pass looks downfield, incomplete. That was for number. Trying to look for that number there. Thirty. Was that thirty-two? For I believe. Lavery, thirty-seven. Yeah, Lavery. Yeah. yeah. No, 30, uh, thirty-two. I think. Is it thirty-seven? Anyways, incomplete. Whatever. Eighty-two. Down incomplete. So um, now Exeter's going to come out second down. He had an opening there. Ten. But, yeah, he had a little bit of an yeah, opening. Ball just is not hitting that uh, that seam pass. Thank you very much. Ball is on the 36-yard line. Second and 10, 825. Clock has stopped. Exeter wing to, w wing to the right, two in the backfield. Ball. It's double hand. Here's a double reverse coming back. And Bedford sniffed it out going nowhere. No. Nothing. That was Cam Flanagan on a Don't double reverse coming that back. Play. I mean, they're having a hard, not, not hard enough time getting through the hole, you know, with a quick to the line. I mean, there's de that wasn't a misdirection play. A little surprised at that, the last two calls, Mike. Third and 10, 8.07. Clock is ticking. Ball's on the Exeter 35 yard line. This is going to be, they got third and 11 now, so this yeah. is a big play. I don't think this is two down territory. No, no, they'll kick this away, I think. So straight T, ball under center, snap, fake, ball goes back, rolls back, looks to shoot far side, and that is incomplete. Yeah. Under through it. Exeter is going to have to kick it away. Yeah, just tremendously disciplined defense right there. I mean, every time that Exeter tries to, to push it one way and hold somebody in the backside, uh, Bedford's uh, defense is right there, staying home, staying where they belong. And um, that's been the difference for me in the game so far, Mike. And Ball's inability to be able to complete a pass. I mean, this is it's, it's just... Uh, Of course, the kid never comes off the field. Punt is back. Morissette back. Backs up Hussein. He catches it at the 20. Comes near side. Cuts now back the other way. Dodges the run at 25. Turns the corner. Gets it to 30. And then hauled down. Good tackle. Yeah, they got some uh, good, good, um, good kick there. Got that's, some good yardage. That's number 10. Uh, Case Reader, senior. With the stop on uh, on Hussein. So here you go. I mean, uh, this is it's going to if if the if the game's going to fall in line for Exeter all to tie this game up, it's going to be Bedford gets a first down or two, then they stop them. You're going to have four minutes left, and then you see what happens. But right now, um, the offense, Mike, of uh, the Blue Hawks uh, from Exeter just uh, just kind of sputtering. So looks like we got. Um Three to the uh, far side, uh, over to Leahy, 30, 35, 30, gets out to the 40-yard line. Great effort. And there's a flag, there's a so flag. that's a late flag. That could be a late hit on Exeter, if I saw that right. Really? We get a personal foul no. against Bedford. Oh, boy. Yeah, looks Ray, like a face mask on offense. You Ray, don't see that very often. You never see that. And that's at, that was at the uh, after a 10 yard gain, so it's going to yeah. come back again. So it's going to be. Coach Stank isn't going to like that. It's going to be first and 10 again. Coach so. Derek Stank is not going to like that with seven minutes to go in the fourth he's, quarter. Yeah, I'm sure he's not happy. They're talking about it. I don't know what they're talking about. I think they're figuring out how much yardage. Was it a blatant or was well, it? Well, yeah, it's actually, that's a good point. So they're marking it off. No, they're going 15. 5, 10. Oh, it's holding. 10 yards on holding. So it's actually going to oh, be. Oh, I thought I saw him pull a face mask. It's actually going to be first and 10 again. Yeah. So basically yeah. it's a do-over. Yeah, it's a do-over. I, I thought when he put, when the ref put his hand that's down, he was I calling thought a too. face mask. Bedford breaks. Leahy in the backfield. Bedford sends two to the right, two to the left. Robert waiting a direct snap with 7.24 to go on Bedford's 30-yard line. Robert snaps, taken this way, runs, gets nice. to the 35, 36-yard line, you so it makes up six yards. It's just the, 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 play, the play play, offensive play plan by Bedford is just exactly, remember we came out here, you got to have Connor start running the ball more, which he's doing. He's, you know, now's the time. Yeah, you got a 7-0 lead. Spread the field and the uh, field try and, and find a seam for Connor. So, yeah. so it's he does it so well. It's second down, five to go. Balls on the Bedford 36, going from our right to left here at UNH Stadium, Durham, New Hampshire. Okay, 
Uh, trips to the left, one to the right, Leahy in the backfield, hands off to Leahy, comes near side, finds a seam, gets to about the 38-yard line and drag down, so that's yeah, going to be... A little bit of fatigue factor coming in with the Blue Hawks. When they start grabbing guys and trying to twist them down yeah. rather than stand up, that's a sure sign. It was like when I was a coach on the sidelines, I knew I had to get some replacements if I had the depth because so they're not standing them up anymore. Third and a long two to go. Almost three. Yeah, this this is six twenty-three to go. Not in any way suggesting this is the play of the game, but uh, don't underestimate. Oh, the this is this. No, this, this is, is big. You got to move the this sticks here. <clears throat> There's no question. You don't want to give the ball back to Exeter with six minutes to go. So two to the right, two to the left. Leahy in the backfield. Connor Robert waiting to get the direct snap. <clears throat> Gotta believe it's going to be Leahy. Robert takes the snap. No, yeah. Oh boy, that was motion. <laughs> Everybody ran except the center. Everyone knew the the, the count except the center. <laughs> so. That's going to be five yards. That's not good. That's not what Coach Tank wanted. That, that's never a good thing when everybody but the center knows the snap. So instead of third and two, now it's going to be third and seven or, or eight. Yeah. So uh, that's not good. And Coach Tank is not happy in the sidelines, you can tell. And you don't see that, too. This is a very disciplined uh, Bedford team. I don't, think I, I don't think I've seen that all year. Very, no. Where everybody, everybody left and, uh, and the center no. still had the ball. So. so six minutes to go. Third and seven. Balls on the 33. Two to the right, two to the left. Leahy in the backfield with Robert. Robert direct snap. Fakes, rolls to the right. He's got a wide open. He's going to take it. He's going to go 35, 40. Gets the first down, 45. Dragged out of bounds about the 48 or 9 yard lines of Bedford. But that's going to move the sticks. Well, Clock's going to stop. what happens when you have a three-man rush. I mean, that's... that's uh Connor, you give him all that kind of time. He's going to find the outside. He's too quick, too sleek, too smart. He, he had all kinds of real estate in front of him, and he just tucked it and ran. The weapon of Connor Robert. The He'll weapon of Connor Robert to me is get out, get him outside of the pocket. Chuck it down the field or run it down the field. So Bedford with 5.44 to go. Ball is on the 48-yard line of Bedford. First and 10. Two to the right, two to the left. Leahy in the backfield. Robert hands off to Leahy right up the middle. Gets to almost the 45-yard line of Exeter to the 46. So yeah, Fatigue, Mike. Nice pickup. Fatigue. On the, uh oh looks like we have a problem here. We have a flag. That's a real late flag. Now, yeah, he must have said something. That, that may to be the, an unsportsmanlike conduct. Against... Boy, I didn't see any Exeter kids around. I only saw no, Bedford only kids. No, I only saw those two Bedford and kids. And all the Bedford kids are backing up. So they must have. Somebody must have mouthed off to the official. Oh, Coach Stank is 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 incensed right yeah, now. All the Bedford kids are backing up. So you know it's against Bedford. Here's here's the here's the play. It's a dead ball foul. And that is unsportsmanlike conduct. Yep. That's what it was. Yep. Somebody mouthed off to the official. And, boy, talk about a, a, a drive killer. In, in 5.33 to go in the game, the championship game up seven, and you're going to mouth off to the official? That, to me, is just uh, Shocking. Uns unsportsmanlike. So it's going to be first. That's why they call it. Yeah, it's going to be first, and now looks like 17. Wow. Ball is on the 30. Let's see where the ball spotted. It's going to be at the 38-yard line. Bedford breaks, Leahy in the backfield. Two to the right, two to the left. Man in motion. That's Smith. Fakes to Smith. Robert looks, looks, looks. Fires downfield, going for Shabrick, and that's intercepted. And there's a flag. Yeah, it'll be offense. It'll be offensive interference, Mike. Which will be. Uh, which will be declined. Which will be declined. Yep. So, yeah. So that's an interception, and that is a uh, boy. Robert had plenty of room to run to, and he decided to chuck it downfield. Yeah, I don't really understand that play call, Mike. To be honest with you, you got first down and 17 with an offense that's, that owns the edge, owns the edge in the yeah. running game. Yeah. Why you wouldn't? And the, every time they over uh, pursue the edge, Connor goes up the middle for nine. I we're gonna we're gonna look back at this play at 5:26. And, and question that. Don't understand it. After the uh, unsportsmanlike uh, penalty against Bedford. I mean, but that, that ball was just sailing up in the air. Had a lot of hang time. And an INT for Exeter. So Exeter breaks. Straight T. Ball in the center. First man through his cam. It breaks. Left-hand side. Yeah, Gets out to about the 33-yard line. Give this defense from Bedford incredible credit. They, they you know... Blue Hawks can score too. I mean, if you look at their scoring, oh, they've got they put up some uh, huge up numbers some huge this numbers, year. And it's yeah. just such a testament to this defensive front. I mean, they put up 40 against uh, Nashua North in the yep. regular season. And um, one of the, one of the challenges, and, and I remember this coaching against teams who had a safety like Sean Rukusain. 
You're never going to score a touchdown on one play. Exeter breaks. <laughs> Straight T. Ball into center. Ball waiting for the snap. Snap. Second man through. Broken, broken play. play. Ball far side. Gets it a 30. Tries to cut it upfield. He's met by a slew of Bulldogs. Get to about the 35-yard line they're going to give him. Yeah, I could, I'm going to say the offensive sputtering of, uh, of, uh, of Exeter it doesn't really... Uh, definitely a broken play. Yeah, definitely. Yep. So 434 and counting. Exeter with the ball moving third from our five, left, to, left to right. Looks like third and five. The scoreboard's a little sluggish in their numbers up there. They got third and seven, but we know that's not right. 422 to go. Ball is on the 36-yard line of Exeter. Moving from our left to right. Single T, uh, two men in the backfield. Ball in the center. Bedford jumps. No flag. Can't believe it. Ball's checking. Now he's going to call a timeout. He thought Bedford jumped and there was no flag and Ball's forced to call a timeout. He's furious and so is in Coach yeah, Ball. Both I balls are mad. Kyle and, and the coach. I cannot believe that ball was, that was not called. Wow. Good. Bedford got very lucky right there or fortunate, whatever you want to call it, by that. Not because that, that was going to be a first down right there. Um, wow. I mean, you talk about penetrating the neutral zone, right? What no. do you see? Yeah, I, 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 there's no question. Yeah. Wow. So, um, Bedford, we have a timeout here with is the that, score seven nothing. Is this that is one of those plays where the one ref looks at the other one, the other one looks at the other one, and nobody? Really I, I thought you were going to call it. No, I thought it was like a Three Stooges play. Yeah. Well, I could drop a flag out this window, so, but it would only get down to the seats below. So this Division One Boys Championship game brought to you by Bedford 105-1. And I am from Bedford, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and we're at UNH Stadium in Durham, New Hampshire on a beautiful night for football. Bedford leading 7-0. Exeter with the ball. The series before Bedford sort of shot themselves in the foot with unsportsmanlike conduct yeah. and an ill-timed pass for an interception. But, but this defense, wow. But the defense, if, if the story of the games, if Anything. Bedford continues on, the story of the game is going to be of the Bedford defense and shutting down this high-volume, vaunted Exeter offense. But no Exeter breaks with a straight tee, ball into center, ball waiting for the snap. Snap is down. Ball keeps it, goes far side. He gets smothered by a group of Bedford players. And it's going to be they, they fourth must, down and about they just four to have, go. They must have no confidence in play-action passing. See, I mean, a, a core part of this game is play-action passing out of these offenses. So, I'm just shocked. Yeah. yeah. The big decision. So, Coach Ball sends Kyle Ball back out. And here's another fourth and two Clock. for the Exeter team. And they're going to come out. Big play here. Straight T. Ball under center. This could be the season for Exeter if they don't get this. Ball ready for the snap. Maybe they're trying to draw Bedford. Bedford's not biting. Comes in second man through. That's Flanagan. Gets the first down to the 45-yard line of Exeter. Moves the sticks. That is getting to the line of scrimmage right there. That was, wow. a, that was a big play by Exeter with 3.23 to go. And as soon as they set the, snick, the sticks, this clock will start ticking away. So this is probably, if this thing goes down into the low twos. It, it Bedford probably will be able straight, to run the clock. Straight T. Ball under center. Ball, first man through Camet, swarmed under nowhere, maybe lost a yard. They were in the backfield before, along with Ball. That was a great you know, play. For those, for those guys and gals out there that are interested in the old-fashioned offenses, like this is, a, you know, T is, double wings, single wings, whatever. One of the things that you you you, you really do is you, you wait for the, the 11 guys to get in the box. Well, they're all 11 in the box right now. I don't know why they didn't play, they're not play-actioning out of this. Exit a break, second down and 11. Ball's on the 44-yard line, 2.46 to go in the game. Straight T, ball under center. Second man through, ball keeps it near, uh, near side, coming this way. Intercepted! Oh! Bedford just intercepted the ball to the 40-yard line, to the 45. And Kyle who is Lager that? Quist again. Legaquist. There's the kid who may have just brought Bedford their first Division One championship on a huge interception with 2.34 to go in the game. This kid has played a game, hasn't he? <laughs> this Lager, he's the defensive end. He was the key to stopping this offense, and he was the key now with a beautifully timed interception uh, for Bedford. Now, Bedford with 2.34 to go. Bedford has two timeouts. Exeter has two timeouts. They got to be smart with the ball now. So, Leahy in the backfield with Robert. Two to the right, two to the left. Robert hands off to Leahy, far side, turns it up, gets to about the 35 yard line. And two timeouts apiece, Mike. Clock will continue at 225, 224. Uh, Leahy picked up about two yards, three yards on that one on a far side off tackle run. 2.15 to go, second down and seven. Robert coming out with the play. 
Bedford needs to move the stick at least one more time to ensure a championship here. A lot of people down here might have been waiting for this for a decade. We certainly were. So Leahy in the backfield, two to the right, two to the left, handoff to Leahy up the middle, and he's getting close to the first down stick. He gets to about the 28, 29 yard line of this Exeter. Will, this will be the uh, play of the game right here. So it's third down. One yard to go, and Exeter calls a timeout. Yeah, they have to. they got to yep. burn these timeouts yeah, with 1.42 to go. What an interception by Kyle Legoquist. This kid has been playing a great defensive end job for, for Bedford and comes up with a huge interception uh, for Bedford and, and stops a, a drive that Exeter uh, dearly needed to continue this, um, to continue this game. I'm thrilled for Kyle. Kyle's worked hard throughout his youth, youth senior, career. Senior. He's a senior, a senior too. To, yeah. uh, to work himself into a starting position position like this, just a fabulous, uh, and he's just played smart, he played solid and consistent. So the seniors in this team, Sharuk Hussein, Miles Strickler, Liam Green, Kyle Legoquist, Owen Brown, Nick Canoni, Brian Thibodeau, or Thibodeau, uh, uh, Caleb McDonald, uh, Connor Collins, Jacob Collins, uh, and a host of others that have been waiting and playing for sometimes four years at the, uh, at the Bedford Hilltop in Bedford, New Hampshire. Bedford comes out. We've got uh, three to the right, trips to the right. Leahy in the backfield, handoff to Leahy, far side up the middle, and that's a first down. That's going to move the stick. He's got it. That, that, uh, that's uh, a tight spot, though. This is a real tight spot. I saw the far side guy come in. Let's see what that first down. They yep. just moved the sticks with 135. Statistically, and that should do it, Mike. That should do it. Yep. And Bedford. And you don't have a spread machine to come down the last two with the warning. 135 to go in the game, up 7 0. And there's been the, I think this is the final timeout. There is a timeout in the field. Not sure who called it. We'll have to look at the clock. But 135, Bedford leading 7 0 uh, on Exeter. the 26th. Yeah, it was Exeter's Exeter. timeout. Yep. So. So that's it. That's it. No more timeouts. I mean, Terry, go ahead, jump in. I just, just want to uh, congratulate uh, our other uh, football winners today. Division three, Stevens over Interlakes Moultonboro. They won today, 46-20. They're the Division three champs. And in the Division two game, it was a tight one, but uh, Plymouth pulled it out, 27-24 over the Bow Falcons. Thanks, Harry, for those uh, timely stats. And and if Bedford uh, all goes according to script with 135 to go and leading 7 nothing, Bedford is uh, is moving their way to their first Division One championship. Derek Stank's done a great job managing Connor, this game. Connor Robert, uh, two to the right, Leahy in the backfield, hands off to Leahy, uh, right-hand side, moves it up about three yards, and this clock's not going to stop now. Can't it's stop it. 29, no. so... Bedford, uh, if they get another first down, has basically sealed a championship win, and, and they just gotta they just gotta keep the ball in their hands. Period. Thinking back to when Coach Stan called that timeout before the special teams kick, Mike, and uh, uh, th that was the time with a sputtering offense. It hasn't been getting anything going. The only thing they really had an opportunity to do was maybe make a big play on on uh, special. Two to the, the right, two to the left. Leahy in the backfield with 102, and the clock is counting. Robert, direct snap, hands off to Leahy, up the middle, stumbles, breaks a tackle He's to the 5, to the 10, down to the 10-yard line, and that's just going to seal, that's going to move the sticks, and that's going to seal a championship for the Bedford Bulldogs, barring any incredible turnover, go right fumble. Into, go right into victory motion here and run it out. I would go right into and come up to the line and take two knees, three knees, four knees, whatever they got to do. The clock is ticking. These kids are ecstatic. 45, 45 43. The Bedford uh, Bulldogs on the sideline. The fans are thrilled. A lot of silence over on the far sideline. Just for those Connor at home. Robert for those at home, takes they, got, a knee. they have 32, the Gatorade bucket ready 31. to go. Here. This is going. I think they don't have to run another play depending on when they put into play. So we're going to look at the clock ticking 22-21. Nine years ago, Bedford did not win a game. And in 2016, wow. they did not lose a game. Champions for Division I 2016 go to the Bedford Bulldogs of Bedford, New Hampshire by a score of 7-0 over a very tough Exeter team. Very tough. And they're celebrating out there in the field and well-deserved for these Bedford Bulldogs. This team from top to down, all they had to do was make the right adjustments in the second half coming out on offense. They saw, they knew they had to run Connor. They did it. Well, they found they had to write Connor, and Coach Dank and his staff did it. The other thing they did is they got Leahy off of the edge by pinching in the ends. They did it. And what happened, Mike? They scored a touchdown. 
down. And the third thing they did is they came out and they recognized in their drives they had to increase the pace of the amount of plays per minute. That's exactly what happened. They got the seven points. And I don't care if it's 70 nothing or 7 nothing. It's a win. There's something about this one that's real sweet. The magic number, 12-0. The Bedford Bulldogs finished their first undefeated season in the history of NHIAA football for Bedford. They've, well only, they've only been in the league nine years, and they have taken home their first Division I championship. This is a long time coming. This is their third shot into the uh, into the winners, uh, the fourth shot into the in, into trying to get into the winners circle, and they do it here in UNH Durham, New Hampshire, on November 19, 2016, against a very tough and determined Exeter football team. Steve, great, great play for Bedford. And, and let's not forget about these referees who let this game play. Uh, you know, we laughed a couple times about this call, but this this is a well officiated game. These guys stayed out of it. They didn't change the game. They called them the penalties they had to call and uh, give these guys a lot of credit. They did a great job, the men and the, the, the striped uh, the striped gentlemen that go out there and officiate this game. It's a hard job. We're probably going to get some stats here in a little, little later, but uh, let me just say quickly thank you to Harry Kozlowski of uh, Bedford 105.1 Radio. Bill Jennings, Chris Gentry, and Pete Johnson over on the camera outside. It's a cool night. They did a nice job outside. Steve Beals, obviously another great job doing color. Um, I'm Mike Robinson. What a thrill to be following this team this year, Steve. From the very first win against Merrimack, a tough win, to the very last win against Exeter here in Durham, New Hampshire. If, if there was ever a, a display where, you know, or something that's, uh, you know, a, a game that supports that the adage that great defenses win championships, there were two great defenses defenses here and one was a little better than the other and that's really what changed the game. We talked about that when it comes down to it when we talk about this game it's going to come down to defense and the Bedford defense stepped up big time. Yep. They did a fabulous yep. job. Uh, Lagerquist with that great interception at the end. Spencer um, Adams Spencer played, Adams played great. You know, uh, How about this kid, 72, that came in? Uh, uh, was it Francis? That Francis, ca yeah. came in for... So, so many teams, the backup guy does, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's yeah. a liability, not this guy. Kyle Jalbert goes out. But at least he got a chance to play in the championship game. And he uh, came into yeah, play. And yeah. listen, you know, you can't take it away from these kids, these, no. these, these Bedford kids who've waited nine years and all the Bedford uh, legacy kids and that, have, that have played for this program over the years are now proud to say that their Bedford Bulldogs are champions in 2006. And let's, let's not forget, years ago, they ran into that Pinkerton team that was one of the best teams that have come through high school football in a long time. Yeah. Last year, they ran into that Goffstown gang oh. that was, I mean, that's a one-in-a-decade team they are going to get out of Goffstown. Nothing, great coach over there, but he had some players uh, that were just fantastic. And then to come back here again, yeah. got, I, I doubt very much it's going it, to, Bedford's going to be coming back into it every single year. And the Coach Stank, what a Terrific fabulous job, job in, his, in job. his second full season, took over from Coach Hines, who was the first coach here, tried three times. To get to, they were in the show, tried to bring home the trophy. Um, but, 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 but remember, Coach Stank was here with a from critical the role no question. developing this defense from day no one. Question. No one can take that away. This guy didn't just come take over. He built this program. Harry, we got some stats. Harry, you want to run down the stats for us? Harry's going to be picking up his head, headphone. Thank you. All right. Here we go. The, the uh, total offense, uh, 289 for Bedford, 152 in uh, for Exeter, and that's a huge difference from the first half, as you recall, where they both had about 100 yards yep. apiece. So uh, Bedford really dominated in the second half. And Nick Leahy, what a second half he had. 18 carries, 124 yards. Connor Robert, 10 carries, 55 yards. Robert was 8 for 21 passing. He, he had uh, two interceptions, 66 yards, but one touchdown, the winning touchdown, to, uh, I believe it was uh, Chabrick, right? Uh, I thought it was Chabrick. Yeah, yeah Chabrick. Noah Chabrick. Chabrick, yeah. Yep. Noah Chabrick with the uh, the uh, the touchdown play. I believe that was a 23-yarder. Yep. So that was the difference in the game right there. And looking at, just quickly, at uh, Exeter, they're leading uh, Carrier Kamet 50 yards on 15 carries. Uh, ball that you mentioned he had trouble cl completing passes. One for six, two interceptions today. Jeff for 10 yards. The time of possession narrow, too, for Bedford. They, they got a lot of the ti ti uh, time of possession. Well, back. look at the possession because Exeter actually had the better time of possession overall, 27 minutes versus Bedford. Well, I'm 20. talking second half versus second half, half. for sure. Yeah. But how about third down conversions where yeah. Bedford only had one in the first half, they had five in the second half, and none bigger than that last one with under yeah. a minute to go. So yeah. I mean, I, uh, the, the last thing is, is the, the little internal parts of the game. When you saw these kids
distance from Bedford go out in the field. They were playing for one. They were playing for one person, and that's Derek Stank. That, as far as a coach is concerned, and they went out and they executed the mission and uh, that, that, that he set forth. I give uh, Derek a little edge on. Uh, Bill Bell is one of the greatest coaches in New Hampshire all time. No question. Don't take anything away from him. But I think Derek Stank probably took his crew and did a better job of adjusting in the second half of that offense. Listen, Stank played defensive end here at UNH for yep. four years, and he brought his Bedford team in here to play a solid defensive effort, yep. and that rubbed off on Coach Stank in bringing the first championship to the uh, the Hilltop in Bedford. So, so congratulations you to bet. the 2016 Bedford Bulldogs. As I said before, in the nine years ago, they didn't win a game, and in 2016, they didn't lose a game. Great and they're players, champions. great players. If they don't have their best game, do little things in between. And I don't want to forget what Connor Roberts has done for this team all year long, with a great teammate, great attitude, and great execution all year long. This was a game that had played, he played against a tough defense. I will call you back to the play where he threw an interception and he didn't stand and watch the play because that was a touchdown. If he didn't do that. This is a very different didn't game watch if that happened. Mistake. So no don't question. forget the, the, the fixing that he did and the attitude that that kid showed. Yeah. You know, fire. Well, we're going to have this thing up on video at BCTV because Bill it's Jennings Bill Jennings did a great job and his crew out there. I'm going to mention him once again. Bill Jennings, Chris Gentry, Pete Johnson on camera. They, they sort of uh, well, were out in the elements to bring this to you. We'll have that on BCTV a little later on this week. Harry Kozlowski at uh, W at uh, Bedford 105.1. And Steve Beals, thanks again for oh, being here. Oh, my pleasure, here. Mike. I love working the with last you. Time we were here at UNH. It wasn't a great outcome. This time it was. We're going to sign off here at the UNH Stadium in Durham, New Hampshire, with the final score: Bedford seven, Exeter nothing. The 2016 Division One champions are the Bedford Bulldogs of Bedford, New Hampshire. My name's Mike Robinson. Can't wait to see you guys next year. Thanks for listening. <laughs>